downtown, summer in the city. The big town ready for some more baseball tonight. After the Mets have themselves a successful weekend against the Phillies, they welcome in their first place foes tonight. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Atlanta Braves. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets open a four-game series against the first-place Braves. You know, when teams give out long-term contracts, there are a lot of pitfalls. Just as the Milwaukee Brewers. We'll talk more about that later yep. on. The Mets gave an eight-year contract to David Wright this past offseason, and some guys struggle early in a new contract. Not right. He has had a phenomenal first half plus of the season. Well, I tell you what, David is the senior statesman of this ball club. He's here on the longest. Uh, usually you shy away from long term contracts. Jim Cott once told me a long time ago, you got to know who you give the who to give the long term contracts to. He will live up to it. This was his uh, 15th home run of the season. David's just been so solid. He's one behind Mike Piazza now for, uh, for second place in all-time Met home runs. But, you know, this is the best baseball as you look at David's numbers month by month. Now, the RBIs are down. This club has had trouble scoring runs. There hasn't been a lot of runs out for them. And they pitched around them, around David, early until Marlon Bird caught fire. But my main point is this. From my professional point of view, this is the best baseball I've ever seen David play both both sides of the diamond defensively and offensively. Well he certainly done it on the field and as the fourth captain of Mets history he's done it off the field as well he's been the complete package. Yeah more importantly you know team meetings he's been a guy that there's been a likeness to David this year that we haven't seen the past couple of years where it's kind of been a burden at times so that's good to see he's been encouraging to the young players he's been everything you'd want in a captain. So David and the Mets start the uphill climb against the Braves. They're 10 games behind going into this four game series. So there's some hope here. And Dylan G, who has given the Mets a lot of reason to hope over the last six weeks, takes them out tonight. You know, it's interesting. He's five and one in his last nine starts. That only loss against the Atlanta Braves, that walk off two run home run, the Freddie Freeman. But he has been excellent and he evened his record in his last start against Pittsburgh. That one loss might have been the best game he pitched during that nine game stretch. On the other side for Atlanta, Julio Tehran, the young right hander from Colombia. Well, he's been outstanding too. seven wins in the first half of the season although his last start before the break was not good. So it's the Mets and the Braves opening a four game set at City Field with Dylan G on the mound. Come on back all the action coming your way tonight right here on SNY.
by your Tri-State Cadillac dealer. Visit CadillacTriState.com to search local offers and find a dealer near you. By AT&T, rethink possible. By Xerox, with Xerox, you're ready for real business. By the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event, where you can drive away for practically just your signature. And by Extended Stay America, the best hotel value by the day, week, or month. Book now, ExtendedStayAmerica.com. Get to City Field this Thursday for your David Wright figurine presented by Tops. The first 10,000 fans attending the 12-10 game against the Braves will receive a David Wright figurine. Keith will save you one. Get to Mets.com for tickets. Time to take a drive around the majors presented by Cadillac. The big news in baseball. Ryan Braun has accepted a suspension that will carry for the remainder of the season for his connection with biogenesis performance enhancing drugs. The Cubs have traded Matt Garza to the Rangers for four players and Paul Canerco back with the White Sox back from a back injury. Dylan G getting himself set. Trying to get above 500 on the season. Got a win right before the All-Star break to get him dead even on the year. Mets and Braves first pitch is coming right up. Verizon. You can meet Mr. Met at the Verizon store at 4521 Broadway in Washington Heights this Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. and sign up for a chance to participate in a free kids clinic at City Field on August 4th. MLB.com at bat is celebrating five years as your number one mobile app for, for live baseball. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Mets baseball with live audio, stats, highlights, and more text at bat to 31826 or visit Mets.com for details. Well, the umpires are meeting with the managers at home play, but Dylan G is still warming up in the bullpen, so it's going to be a few minutes before we get started here. The tarp was on the field a little bit earlier, and so just a few minutes late in getting started, and it gives us a chance to talk about what is uh, the, the big news in baseball. Released late this afternoon, Major League Baseball announcing that Ryan Braun has accepted a suspension that will carry through the remainder of the season 
for his connection with Biogenesis and Tony Bosch. No word on the other players who were involved, including Alex Rodriguez. But um, the Braun thing is troubling only because he had been um, he had tested positive for testosterone two winters ago. He had gotten off on a technicality. He had proclaimed his innocence loudly, almost as loudly as we remember Rafael Palmero yeah. doing before Congress. And now today says, I realize now that I've made some mistakes. It's, uh, it strikes one as completely disingenuous, and it's, it's really his behavior, frankly, has been disgusting. Well, um, it is in the game that's all of us to it and it was a lot worse a long time ago and it's a, you know it's it's a sad day you know how i feel about steroids you know, i think that anybody that's that it's been proven to take steroids is is automatic no chance for for hall of fame they don't deserve to be in the hall of fame i feel very strongly about that um also uh you know i think the suspensions are tough gary this is a little bit different they couldn't go by the rule where it was what the, the, the three three strikes you're out because there was other ev it was evidence not where they actually caught him. He's been part of an investigation. You, it, so, you know, he's out the rest of the season. Milwaukee is pretty much out of it. So as a team, Milwaukee doesn't suffer. But the number one guilty guy here is going to lose a lot of money um, and he's going to have to sit out for the rest of the year and uh, we'll see how it goes going forward you know i don't know what's worse that he cheated that he lied or that disgrace of a statement that he issued um you know what uh, a, a real jerk in the way he handled the, this whole thing and uh, good riddance i'm glad he's gone and uh, and uh, his you know what i feel bad about is those milwaukee fans right. because they had a decision to make do we go all in on Ryan Braun or do we go all in on Prince Fielder? They decided to let Fielder become a free agent. He signs with the Tigers. They picked the wrong guy. There's this guy in middle America in Milwaukee. Those fans are going $3 million per year in droves to that ballpark, and now he's disgraced them. And what about if, when you go back to the, um, the the suspension that was overturned on a technicality because it had been quote-unquote mishandled and the way that the character of the uh, the handler, yeah. the the person who was responsible for taking the samples, was impugned by Braun and his team. That gentleman, who uh, really was defamed in, in in many ways, now comes off looking like the good guy here, and you wonder what happens with him. The good guy is probably right now one eight hundred law firm uh, because uh, he really has uh, an argument against uh, uh, Ryan Braun. Well, there are other shoes that are clearly going to drop in the biogenesis. Um, you know, there are a lot of people a lot more attuned to this story than we are who've been following it very closely. And, um, you know, Alex Rodriguez is clearly in baseball's crosshairs right now. And, uh, you know, the, the difference here is that Braun accepted the punishment. I think he felt, I hate to, to read into it, but um, he's on a contract which pays him less this year than it will next year so he, he gets less of a penalty than he would have otherwise his team's out of the race he's got a bad thumb anyway it seemed probably like a good time for it to, him to accept the penalty rather than letting it drag on to next year and i don't want to speculate but it lets me uh, it makes me feel as though major league baseball had plenty of stuff on him also for him to accept it and i really feel one thing let the story come out in its entirety don't hold anything back let the public know. Expose it for what it is. And uh, air the dirty laundry. That's the best way. Be honest with your public, your fans. I thought um, I thought I heard something that was so spot on today. And maybe it was you who said it, Ronnie, that maybe the best penalty that you could level up to a high-profile player is that if you were caught um, with performance-enhancing drugs, uh, if the evidence is overwhelming, if you're guilty, your contract should be voided and that should be the first thing that happens rather than being suspended for a period of time. Here's your Hyundai starting lineup for the Atlanta Braves who come in in first place in the National League East. They've been kind of doddering along in the month of July just seven and nine. Jason Hayward back from six games on the sidelines with a hamstring injury not only comes back but he comes back to play center field with B.J. Upton on the disabled list. The last time Dylan G faced the Braves he pitched brilliantly into the ninth inning. Well uh, he did. Uh, you know it's interesting you said it in the open Gary. Uh, best game he's pitched in this whole stretch where he's gone five and one but great job of evening that record after getting off to that slow start and he has been outstanding using all of his pitches and and back to his changeup. 
We'll take a look at the Metsy defense brought to you by Lexus and Ike is back in the lineup. It's been kind of stated that it's going to be a platoon uh, the rest of the way or at least uh, unless Ike gets hot if Ike can find his stroke he's going to be in the lineup being in the you know, 30, 32 home runs. You know he's good with the glove defensively. Uh, Turner is back in the lineup now on the roster so that's going to be able to get Quintanilla a break at shortstop once in a while and you know spell Daniel Murphy at second base those guys have been out there they've been the iron horses here along with Wright and Bird on this Met lineup Turner activated today after five weeks on the sidelines with an intercostal injury so he's available tonight Greg Burke goes back to Las Vegas so the Mets are back to 12 pitchers they're in the standings in the National League East the Braves remember began the year 12 and 1 and they've kind of coasted since then and nobody's really made much of a challenge with the rest of the division sitting under 500. And there is Justin Turner back, and I assume he has the whipped cream at the ready. Mets, I hope three not. games behind the Nationals. Well, wow. I mean, things can change in an awful hurry. Because nobody else has really taken charge in this division, it's still an incredibly unlikely scenario. But here are the Mets with four games against the first place team. They're 10 games out of the division. We'll see what happens this week. Josh Satin on the bench tonight against the right hander. Well, this could be a very important series if we when we look back on this season right here. Angleton Simmons will lead it off. Simmons at 243 on the year, 283 on base percentage out of the leadoff spot. And the first pitch by G is bunted foul, and we're underway. So the game starts seven minutes late after the tarp was on the field and pushed back the pregame proceedings a bit the way this year has been that's a victory <laughs> that's nothing <laughs> are you kidding and Simmons can't find the fastball it's 0 and 2 Jason Hayward on deck then Justin Upton for the Braves in the first G is facing the Braves for the third time this year first time he faced them in late May here was right before he got on his hot streak and he had a bad night gave up five runs in five innings and a six nothing loss. And then the very next start was the one at Yankee Stadium where he really seemed to get more aggressive struck out 12 batters in that game and that jump started his season and he's been riding with that ever since. One two coming to Simmons and the slider is fouled off. That night uh, McGill those five runs Mets struck out 12 times in that ball game. Not a lot of offense. That's have won 19 of their last 31 games that streak began right before they went to Atlanta that last time when G pitched that gem that he lost in the ninth. On a Freddie Freeman walk off two run homer. Remember the Mets won the last game of the series against the Cubs on the Kirk Neuenheis walk off. Then G opened the series in Atlanta took that one nothing lead into the ninth. Before Freeman broke it up. And then the Mets played the doubleheader the next day where Harvey and Wheeler both pitched was Wheeler's debut swept the doubleheader and they've really been rolling ever since. One two again. And it's popped up fouled again. Since mid June when the Mets got on this hot streak there are only two teams in the major leagues who have had better records than the Mets. The Rays are just ridiculously hot right now. The Rays are probably playing the best baseball of anyone in, in the major leagues and the Dodgers probably have the most potent offense. G working hard on the leadoff hitter and Simmons taps another one foul. Simmons is hanging in there and. It's a brave team now that's been over 500 every month. They got to that great April 17 and 9. Slightly over 500 the last couple months, but this July they're 7 and 9. They've been struggling. They've had some people hurt. Freeman missed some games with a thumb injury. BJ Upton's on the disabled list. Justin Upton missed a few games. Hayward's just back tonight. Here's the 1 2. Just inside with a fastball. 2 and 2. Good pitch right there, Ronnie. I like that one until you had to pitch the ways, move him off the plate. Late, make him a little wary, and then you can go back outside. Dylan G usually doesn't double up inside. Ninth pitch of this opening at bat, and Simmons fouls off another one. So it's turning into a marathon at the start of the game. Well, Simmons uh, not having the year. He's got a nice swing. I thought his swing got a little long this year. 
A little bit of an open, not open stance. His legs are normal, but watch his front foot. That tap. Everybody has that tap today, which, you know, it's something different. It wasn't around in my day, and uh, it works for the players. They watch him bring his front foot back. He toe taps back a little bit. And then the big stride. What is it they teach? The squish the bug, I think, is uh, the phrase. Hey, don't, don't frown at me. I didn't say it. I don't understand it. Well, he's only 23. He might still say squish the bug. That's right. <laughs> 11th pitch to Simmons and another foul ball. Look at Dylan slumping over. I mean, you see at bats like this in the course of a game, you rarely see them from the first batter of the game. And well, it certainly takes a toll on a starting pitcher. Look at Chi bend over. It's like, what am I going to do to get this guy out? Oh, you also hung it there, too. He was probably. Saying thank goodness he didn't hit it a country mile. Again, the 2 2 coming to Simmons. And the curveball hit on the ground. Finally, he puts it in play. And Murphy makes the play. 12 pitches for Dylan G to get the first down of the night. Well, he's back up curveball here. Watch him. It starts at his shoulder, it stays inside. That's, kids don't swing like that. That's not a good swing. That's called getting tied up. He was tired. Possibly. All those swings. One out and nobody on now, Jason Hayward. Hayward hurt his hamstring about a week and a half ago, sliding. And he was supposed to come back yesterday in Chicago, but he took an extra day, he said, because Freddie Gonzalez has asked him to play center field. And he said, if I'm going to play center field, I need an extra day for my hamstring to be fully healthy. Popped up on the third base side. David Wright tracking it. Quintanilla comes over and calls him off. And that's the second out. So after a 12 pitch at bat for Simmons, Hayward out on one pitch. Jason Hayward, Dr. Kildare. Uh, I, don't, I don't get it. But uh, 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 I'm not saying a lot of players today, but, but the way the game is played, um, it's very important for a lot of the athletes to not play until they're 100%. That's how they feel. And they'll tell you. Yeah, right? Here's Justin Upton. Upton got off to the incredible hot start this year, cooled off mightily for the next two months, but just over the last week and a half, he's begun to swing the bat very well again. 258 for the year, 16 homers, 46 driven in, and he flies one to the shallow right along the line in foul territory. There's Ike Davis to snag it. So two pop-ups for G after that extended at bat for Simmons, and the Braves are on one, two, three. Ninth. 
Mike Davis gets the start against the right hander John Buck right back in there after starting yesterday Kirk Neuenheis. Subbing for the National League Player of the Week Juan Lagares it was only a three day week but he went seven for ten and Lagares named National League Player of the Week but couldn't make the lineup tonight against Julio Tehran. Well two seasons ago in the minor leagues Tehran won 17 ball games did not make the team last season but he's been one of their best young pitchers this year. It is Mets headphone night at Citi Field. I think you're supposed to put those on your ears right and you can listen to uh, Josh and Howie. They're very spiffy. They're really kind of cool. Versatile. You can uh, wear them many different ways. I wonder if you can put them into your iPad and listen to your, your iTunes library. Could be better off listening to the game. <laughs> I would think so. Eric Young leads off against Julio Tehran and takes outside for ball one. Young went just one for 11 in the series against the Phillies. Still hitting 288 as a Met with a 366 on base percentage in 27 games. Iran is a guy who does not walk many. He's going to come after you and throw strikes. Daniel Murphy on deck. David right behind him. Tehran just 22 years old. Got his first big league win here at City Field in September of 2011 as a 20 year old. This is his first full year in the Braves rotation and he's pitched very well for a Braves staff that's second in the National League in ERA. He's given up more hits than innings pitched but hardly any walks. Inside strong to young and it's two and two. He's got a fastball that he darts inside and out. Good spotting fastball. His best pitch is his changeup. He's got a little breaking ball he'll throw over for a strike also. Full count to Eric Young. That's some Braves have played 10 games this year. They've split them. It's a whole line of Harvey there. I'm not sure if 33 is going to outtake five in Jersey sales. It'll be second. <laughs> Close second. What a performance yesterday. Here's ball four and Young is on to lead off the game. So Tehran who averages just 1.8 walks per nine innings walks the first man. And the core light, core is light. Excuse me. Braves defense. Uh, just the third start. For Hayward in center field, fifth for his career. That's courtesy of Gary Cohn. He gave me that little number before the game. Thank you, Gary. A little tidbit for you folks at home. Well, with Gaddison left and Hayward in center, it's definitely not the Braves' best outfield defense tonight. And that certainly bears watching as the night goes along. Here's Murphy, who had his 10 game hitting streak stopped yesterday when he went 0 for 4 against Cliff Lee and company. And he hits one in the air to right field. Justin Upton drifting back. And he's got it for the first out. Young went back belatedly thinking about tagging. Just got it in enough and behind by, by Murphy enough. Almost. Familiar territory for Upton. Remember when he was with Arizona, he was their right fielder. So now David Wright. David Homer twice in the series against the Phillies, including a home run of the first inning yesterday. You know that before David hit that first inning home run yesterday, the Mets had only hit one first inning home run at City Field this year. And you know who it was? It was Omar Quintanilla against the Cardinals on June the 11th. Like those two games he let off? Right. Or <laughs> right hitting a 308, 15 home runs. And Tehran keeps the ball away from him, nothing in one. Interesting that. Eric Young not taking a very big lead at all and you've got a very gangly Tahran out there on the mound that is very kind of slow to the plate. It's a very conservative lead. There you go. You know since Eric Young this Marlon Bird on deck. Back to back with David in the first inning yesterday. Since Eric Young's come to the ball club, it seems like he chooses what hitter is up to decide whether he runs or not. Mm. It's a good curveball by Tehran to get ahead one and two. More power at the plate. Maybe he'll stay still. Mm, nice, nice breaking pitch. Young has 18 steals this year, seventh in the National League. 
And again, a very short lead. One, two. And David pulls one foul. David's been very quick inside of late. Usually you can go in there, any good hitter, you want to go inside. But David's been real quick with his hands. But he's been kind of uh, getting that, the hips through. And we'll take a look at the defense. They're kind of shading in the outfield to the opposite field. Look at the center fielder. Straight up on the infield. Again, Johnson, though, plays more to pull as he did in Atlanta. Oh, and Young is picked off. He was set to go. Took one false move. And Tehran picks him off for the second out. Well, a thing of beauty. Oh, he was on his horse. Is right. Good call, Gear. <laughs> Oops. Not playing dodgeball with Eric Young. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Wow, some moves. Curveball strike three call. And so Wright is caught looking to end the inning. Let's get a leadoff walk. Tehran with the pickoff and the strikeout. No score after one. Well, the last time G faced the Braves on June 17th, he pitched brilliantly into the ninth inning. It's always strange when your best pitched game all year long ends up in a loss, but he was on time with his breaking stuff, his change up. Every pitch was working until the pitch to Freeman in the ninth. A little cutter inside, two run home run, starting pitcher walking off. And here is Freeman, who was the culprit, leading off in the second inning. Freeman missed a couple of games with a thumb injury came back on Saturdays three for seven with the home runs is coming back so that thumbs feeling just fine. Thank you and he hooks one to the right side and Daniel Murphy is there to play it one out. You know the only other pitcher in Mets history who's ever taken a shot out into the ninth and given up a walk off home run was Roger Craig in 1963. Wow. He got beat by Roy Seavers at Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia when he carried a shutout into the ninth inning and 50 years later the same fate befalls Dylan G. I mean it just doesn't happen very yeah, often right. that a, right. a starting pitcher suffers a walk off. Here's Brian McCann. McCann coming off his seventh all star game. Here's G's line from that game. Especially uh, in, in this day and age if a guy gets a guy on usually the relief pitcher's in. Let's have the full shift on against McCann, who has been resurgent over the last three weeks. McCann hitting 389 over his last 19 games and three home runs in his last four games. And G being very careful with him, 3 0. 
I think you have to be careful defensively, and, uh, the defensively because he has changed as a hitter. That's why he's up at the 285 mark. He is going the other way again. Let's see some umbrellas open. A little light shower falling. Nothing too significant. A little intermittent rain, Garrett. That's what they would call it. <laughs> and ball four, McCann is the first Atlanta base runner of the night. Oh, hello there. You see that baby right there? He's up in the back, wandering around, playing the arcades. The baby's there watching the game. Oh, you can't walk yet. That's probably one of the <laughs> reasons. <laughs> Here's Evan Gaddis. <laughs> Gaddis got back from the disabled list right before the All Star break. He was out for nearly a month with an oblique injury, and even with missing all that time, still leads all major league rookies in home runs and RBIs. And he pops this one up into shallow right. Long run over for Bird, but he'll get there in plenty of time. And that's the second out. That's three one pitch outs. Among his first five outs for Dylan G. Of course, that wasn't the case with his first out. His first out was a 12 pitch at bat for Andrelton Simmons leading off the game. Did you ever have an experience like that, Ronnie? I did. In 1992, the A's were trying to secure the division, and I had a game to pitch in Milwaukee, which would have got them the division. I lost the game. But Pat Listash, who would be the rookie of the year that year, 17 pitches as the leadoff hitter. The 17th pitch he hit to left field for a single. 17? 17. Wow. I threw 127 pitches that game in seven innings. Win? I uh, lost. Two to one. You know who got the win from Milwaukee? J.O. Jesse. Ooh. Jesse Orozco. Really? Yeah. I forgot Jesse pitched for the. He pitched for everyone. Jeez. Eventually. <laughs> Dan Ugly, 19 home runs tied for fifth in the National League. Draws a lot of walks. Other than that, not a whole lot to recommend this year. And he hits the comebacker to G. Dylan, who has hit blind drives hit at him in his last two starts. This one a lot easier. And he gets ugly to end the inning. A walk in one left. Marlon Bird leads off the bottom of the second when we come back. Go to SNY.TV, click on the link, and join the conversation. It's Chat Live with Bobby O, presented by Verizon, only on SNY.TV. Marlon Bird leads off the home second inning. Marlon hit his 17th home run of the year yesterday in the first inning. Now tied for eighth in the National League in home runs, ninth in the league in slugging percentage. 
He has had himself quite a comeback season. Leo Tehran starts him off with a curveball that drops in for a strike. Marlon has driven in 15 runs in his last 11 games. He's driven in at least one run in each of his last five games. The second longest streak of his major league career. McCann pushing to Tehran, pouring him to throw the ball in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Did not. That was a hanger right there that he got away with. It's one thing about Marlon, very quick inside, still at 35 years of age, has tremendous bat speed. 0 2 from Tehran, and the fastball swung and missed. Second strikeout for Julio Tehran, one down in the second. That's the best fastball Julio has thrown to. It's a, this young game so far. He put some mustard on that one. Well, you could have had any of these guys last year for a price. B.J. Upton, 75 million. Josh Hamilton, 125 million. Michael Bourne, 48 million, was almost a met. But for only 700,000, you get the production that Marlon Bird has put up this year. Sometimes there are bargains to be had. Filene. That's still a very nice paycheck. Ike Davis up with one out and takes the curveball inside. Ike last started on Friday, went two for four in that game. He's at 171 for the year. And with the unannounced or semi, or whatever it is, platoon of Davidson sat in less time to impress. So every time he gets in that game, yeah. he's going to have to uh, really start pushing down on that gas pedal. The Mets are facing right handers tonight, tomorrow night, and Wednesday night. Medlin and Hudson the next two nights. Then they'll face a lefty on Thursday. It's not going to be Paul Mahalam who was placed on the disabled list today. It's going to be Alex Wood, who the Mets faced earlier this season, the youngster. So that'll be a start for Satin on Thursday. But there's, you know, there's another piece looming here as far as Ike trying to impress, and that is that in the next couple of weeks, Lucas Duda is going to be back from the disabled list. See the defense right there, Garrett, on the infield, very much to pull. And when Duda returns, you have to believe with as well as the Mets have played with a more athletic outfield. That Lucas will not be returning to the outfield. And if that's the case, that creates quite the log jam at first base and puts that much more pressure on Davis to produce and produce quickly. It's this one down the left field line, slicing away from Gaddis, and it lands foul. Oh, there. There? Oop. Davis into second base. That was not much. I know Gaddis is trouble out there defensively, but he just. Wanted nothing to do wow. with this ball. Wow. He did not go into a slide, which is what you would expect an outfielder to do in that situation. Now, our view is blocked up here. We kind of get hidden behind the fence. So the way Gaddis played this, it looked like it was foul, and he just pulled up. But I just happened to see out of the corner of my eye, the third base umpire, Jeff Kellogg, called it fair. And then he tries to field it barehanded, which is unexplainable also. Well, Gaddis is a catcher playing the outfield, but that was not well played at all. Anyway, it's a double for Davis, first hit of the game for either side. He's at second with one out, and John Buck the batter. Buck had a seven game hitting streak end yesterday, and he takes inside from Tehran. Mm. That average was almost on the interstate not too long ago. So John, ever since Wrecker has stepped up, and got more playing time because he's hit well. Got some big home runs. John has responded with a little better offense. Well, he hit 367 over that seven game hitting streak. Had some big hits in that span. Oh, there we go. Good oh boy. She's got the right jersey. Can't do better than Hank Aaron. No.
I get second with one out and it's inside and it hits Buck on the arm. That is the tenth batter that Julio Tehran has hit this year. He came into the day tied for second in the league and hit by pitch. He has the same problem that Dylan G sometimes has. When he comes in on the right handers, if it's up and it gets away from him, runs right in on the right handed hitter. Tehran with that ties Ian Kennedy for the league lead in hitting batters. No so now Kirk doing high spats with two men on. No brawls with yeah, Tehran. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Roger McDowell, former Met, now long time. He can use the yeah. a long time on Roger, long time Braves pitching coach. Here's Neuenheis, just two for his last 17. And now really in a much more pitched battle for playing time with the way Lagaris has swung the bat. In fact, Terry said before the game today that he likely will play Lagaris against the right hander, Medlin, tomorrow night. Thomas, that is Lagaris behind the post. He's just been playing awfully well. But he's been protected. He's been playing mostly against lefties, and now they will slowly dip their toe in the water to play him against right handers as well. New and Heist fouls it back one on one. I will say this, though, and New and Heist, even though he had a tough game on Friday night defensively, New and Heist has always played a good center field. But if the Mets are winning the game late, Lagaris has got to come in the game. That's how good he's played center field. There's one. Quiet one. Very soft spoken young man. One one to do an ice and he got up and in on him one and two. Well, from the first day of the season. The Mets outfield has been a work in progress. And we've seen a lot of bodies move through that outfield over the last three and a half months. And little by little questions become answers. And in some ways things that you would not have expected on day one have come to pass. I mean, Eric Young was not even on the radar when the season began. Well, when Kyle Gill was the starting center field. And Juan Lagaris was an absolute afterthought during spring training. In fact, so much of an afterthought that Lagaris, when he played for the Mets this spring, never played center field. They were looking at Matt Dendecker in center field, and Lagaris played mostly left. Mm. Deron strikes out new and highs for the second out. That was a good change up, and that, that, that is his best pitch, Tehran. Well, everybody's got a change up. Third strikeout for Tehran. Now Omar Quintanilla. Quintanilla just two for his last 22. With Justin Turner back, it gives the Mets somebody else who can play shortstop. Quintanilla has been playing every inning of every game, so Turner will probably get a start here and there just to spell Quintanilla. Chance here for Omar with two out and two on. And Tehran paints the outside corner, nothing at one. Davis at second, his double was his first extra base hit since coming back from the minor leagues. G would be next. And Quintanilla swinging over the curveball, one and two. Nice curve, not a strike. Went fishing. A lot of break. Jeron making his 19th start of the year. Beat around as a little bit as last start before the All Star break against Cincinnati. Five runs in five and a third. But that really has been the biggest blip for Tehran in the last couple of months. He's been pitching very well. In 
Very steady. Been a guy, mostly a six inning pitcher for Freddie Gonzalez. And saw him in late May, the last time the Braves were here. He pitched into the seventh, gave up just a run and five hits. Two out, two on, two and two to Quintanilla. And Omar bounces the curveball slowly to Ugla at second base. And that retires the side. A double and two left. We go to the third at City Field. Mets and Braves, no score. Here's your Mets upcoming schedule presented by Wise Snacks. You can listen to all Mets games on Sports Radio 66 and Sports Radio 101.9 FM WFA. And four game series with the Braves culminating with a day game Thursday. Then the Mets go to D.C. for four with the Nationals starting with a day night doubleheader Friday. Four more in Miami before the Mets come home to play. Most Mets fans know that logo. That's the Kansas City Royals whom the Mets play when they come back on their next homestand. Chris Johnson leads off in the third inning against Dylan G and takes a strike. It's going to be fun to see the KC Royals, a very young team. Um, I've heard the best defensive team in the, all the baseball. They can go get anything in the outfield. How about those flamethrowers in the back of that bullpen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holland. Oh, my goodness. Johnson has to move his feet one and one. But they have been underachieving as a as a hitting squad. They're five games under 500 right now, but only seven games out of first yeah. place because the Tigers just have not taken charge again in that AL Central. George Brett still in uniform? Yes, yeah. as the hitting coach. Nice curve, Dylan. Johnson having a good year. He's hitting 332. Six homers, 32 RBIs for the 28 year old former Astro. He was part of that deal with Arizona that brought the Braves Justin Upton. In that deal, the uh, the Braves had to figure out which young pitcher to part with. Would it be Randall Delgado or Julio Tehran? The way Tehran has pitched, I think Frank Wren made the right choice. Yeah. Bouncer over the mound. Tough play for Murphy to his right and makes the off balance throw right on target. Nicely done by Murph. Well, Murph has really come a long way, and he's pretty much, I think, now perfected that off-balance throw where his momentum is carrying him into left field. He's figured it out. He's very accurate now, and he's got a strong arm. You also saw something else on that play, and that is the Braves' lack of speed. They got a lot of truck horses in that lineup. This is not one of them. Andrelson Simmons, he can run. Grounded out to second base his first time up. 
excuse me, Tehran up. Simmons on deck. And Tehran takes ball one. Tehran's pretty good hitter. He's got eight hits, hitting 216 for the year. And pitchers have given Dylan G trouble this year. Grounded over the bag oh, and just foul. That was big trouble. Uh, Wright was playing very far off the line, figuring Tehran was not going to pull the ball, but he did. He almost had himself a double. Well, look at David. He is just, just watching. He couldn't even move. Dylan's given up two home runs to pitchers this year, hasn't he? Yep, Travis Wood and Mike Miner. Gintania right in front of that one and throws out Tehran for the second out. That's not a good batting average against when you're facing pitchers. 250. <laughs> hey, listen, you're talking to someone that had pitchers dominate him in a few games. I gave up two home runs to the same pitcher, a Braves pitcher, Derek Lilliquist in a game. Steve Avery once went four for four against me, so I, I zip it. <laughs> Simmons lines one to left, but right at Young, and the side retires. Dylan G with a 1 2 3 inning despite that bullet off the bat of Simmons. No score in the third. This is this date in baseball history, this date in 1986, the dust up. Oh, oh look at that Ray. Oh, you wanted more, too. It was a wild affair in Cincinnati. This was only part of a, a game that was just craziness from start to finish. This piece, Keith right in the middle of it. Someone hit me That's in the back. Someone hit me in the back of the head. That's why I got tipped off. I, there's two captains in Mets history, John Franco and Keith Hernandez, holding each other. Teddy Power. Yeah, Ted Power. Big Ted, I said I'm okay. Just a little sneak that rabbit punched me. I want to find. I wanted to find out who he was. They had some big guys on that team. Ted Power, remember Ron Robinson? Mm -hmm. That was the game that Dave Parker dropped the line drive with two out in the ninth. I hit it. I hit it off of uh, John Franco. I choked up three inches on my bat. Looked for that hard sinker in and got it. And I should have choked up five inches. Gary <laughs> Carter wound up playing third base. Yes. Jesse Orozco and Roger McDowell both wound up playing in the outfield. Right. Jesse made the final put out of the game. And he was a line drive to right field. He made it look like he was out there like, like an old pro. <laughs> Nothing ever rattled Jesse. Was that the same game that had the double play on the bunch? Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, you made the play Carter playing third. Sure. Right. It was uh, who was the pitcher who played? It was, that a, it was a rookie yeah. pitcher, so I knew he was going to bunt. There's Roger. One of my good buds. Saying that, uh, you know, Rogers, the longtime Braves pitching coach, but also, you know, he's become one of the best pitching coaches in baseball. You look at the track record of his teams and, and what they do. Well, 
probably some of his best work this year because yeah. of the arms that they've lost in their bullpen. I mean, that was such a big strength of the Braves coming into this season, having the specter of O'Flaherty and Venters to go with Kimbrell at the end of games. They lose both of those left handers, and yet their bullpen has still been solid. When Roger played, he was, we called him the power shagger. Yeah. During batting practice, he would get out in the outfield and shag. That's how he'd get his work in. He was a good athlete, too. He could run. Okay, Ron, who walks few, has walked one tonight. He's three and two on the opposing pitcher. He has four hits this year. And he goes down swinging for the first down. That's four strikeouts for Tehran, first time through the batting order. Your cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. And those are the numbers the last three years before this one for those two spectacular lefties in the Atlanta bullpen, neither one of whom is around now. Venture's been out all year. O'Flaherty began the year and then went down as well. James pitched in is a number that. Uh, you have to look at that might have been the, the issue. 80 plus every year. Eric Young walked to lead off the first inning was then picked off by Julio Tehran. Corners pinch in against Eric. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Well Flaherty had a, just a phenomenal year last year. Kind of got lost in Kimbrell's record setting season. He had an ERA below one well into the season. Mm. Oh, nice hook. He runs at a good curveball tonight. That's usually his second choice between his two breaking pitches. Now the 0 2 and he throws that breaking ball at the feet of young one and two. We go Tehran from Columbia a nation that has not produced a whole lot of Major League Baseball players better known for their shortstops than their pitchers. Edgar Renteria Orlando Cabrera notably. A little bit high two and two. Duran's not a real fast worker, a little methodical. And Young just got a piece of that to stay in the at bat. One out and nobody on two and two to Eric Young. And he wife fouls it off. The left hand hitters have better numbers against Tehran this year than the right hand hitters do. Usually that's the sign of a pitcher with a pretty good changeup. Yanked foul. And so Young doing to Tehran what Simmons did to G back in the first inning. Saw that shot behind the catcher. You can really see that Tehran really does a nice job of hiding the baseball. You don't pick it up very well from the young right hander. And young foul tips it. McCann holds on. Back to back strikeouts for Tehran to start the third. Little movement on this fastball. See it dart away. Young can't catch up to it. 
Yeah, so two out and nobody on. Now Daniel Murphy. Murphy flying to right his first time up. Iran has certainly had his spectacular moments this year. He took a no hit bid into the eighth inning against the Pirates back in early June. In fact, he got to two out in the eighth inning of that no hit bid. Speaking of the Pirates, by the way, um, Andrew McCutcheon, two two run homers already tonight wow. off Danny Heron. Five nothing. The Pirates lead the Nats in the fourth. And um, you wonder if things might completely disintegrate in Washington the way things are going. Today they fired their hitting coach, Rick Eckstein, over the objections of Davey Johnson. Davey's very loyal to his coaching staff. Well, we'll see uh, next weekend. We'll be in Washington, starting with that day night doubleheader on Friday. But the Nats now two games under 500. Their pitching continues to be good, with the exception of Heron, who's just yeah. had a disastrous year. But they just don't score with a lineup that looks like it should score. Lately, Davey's been trying Bryce Harper as a leadoff hitter. See if that would work. Side to Murphy, two and two. Tehran really has become the replacement for Jair Jurgens, who had many fine seasons with Atlanta, but had some injuries, lost some velocity on his fastball, and this is a younger version of Jurgens. Full count to Murphy with right on deck. Tehran has walked one. He struck out five. Now the three-two, and Murphy taps one to third. Johnson gives ground and oh makes boy. the long throw. Close play, safe. Oh my gosh! Well, Johnson took his sweet time on this one and misjudged the speed and hustle of Daniel Murphy. There's no excuse for this. I'm sorry. You cannot double clutch here and lolly dog lolly gag it over. And Murph, to his credit, he's out. How about that? But he hustled and made it close enough for the umpire. Blue. Look at the double clutch. Uh uh, you can't do that. Well, Paul Schreiber got it wrong. Murph will take it, and the Mets have a two out base run. And a chance for David Wright with a man on. David took a call, third strike his first time up. Murphy's got 11 steals. That's already a career high. Iran has already picked one runner off tonight. He got young back in the first inning. I just think, you know, Murph's been around now a long time with the Mets. David. David was, you know, stole 30 bases, and now they're much more judicious in their stolen base attempts. I think they both have come a long way to learn how to play 162. You can steal you can steal 20 25 bases important bases without wearing yourself out and have nothing left in tank in October August and September. I think what we've also seen this year is early in games against pitchers who are particularly vulnerable to stolen bases. They've been running a lot. Oh boy that was a pitch to hit. it has got a little uppercut in the game today. Uh, first at bat. Something we have not seen a lot this year. And McCann wants to talk it over with Tehran. David's hit 32 home runs against the Braves, more than he has against any other team. It's turning into, for Brave fans, 
what Chipper Jones was for Met fans. I wonder if David consider, you know, oh. Turner's a nice name. <laughs> I say no. Now say Ron ahead on the count on David one and two. In the air deep right center. Hayward over in the gap. Near the wall he makes the catch as Upton declines to go after it. Nicely done by Hayward. Playing an unfamiliar position center field and handling it very nicely. No score after three. Fourth inning at City Field. Dylan in a scoreless game. Jason Hayward, who just made that nice running catch on David Wright, leads off in the fourth inning. Hayward popped a short his first time up. It'll be Hayward, then Justin Upton, and Freddie Freeman for the Braves in the fourth. Braves have had just one base runner. McCann walked in the second. And Dylan misses inside for ball one. Hayward missed time earlier this year when he had an emergency appendectomy. He's had the hamstring issue lately. It's been a, another less than stellar year for Hayward, who appeared to be destined for stardom when he first put on a Braves uniform. Hits it sharply, but a one hopper for Murphy to handle. One away. When you watch Hayward, Keith, and you look back to the way he began his career, what do you see? I see a very stiff swing. He comes a cuts across his body on his swing and um, he's vulnerable inside. So what everybody is but he's got a flaw in his swing and he's just a very strong young man that he can get away with it. But the pitching has found it out. He's got some holes and. You know they're starting to get him out so. You always want to take a swing. You want to sweep and extend your arms out full. It's a pitch to extend your arms. Now watch him here, and you see how he comes, brings his this front elbow. He brings it across into his body. You see how he comes across. And it, it's, I've seen that, and it makes him uh, vulnerable down low too. Where most left-hand hitters, you don't want to pitch him down low. You can get him out there, and that wasn't really a. a it wasn't as extreme as I've seen them before that one little swing we showed you there. Upton grounds one for Quintanilla. Two ground balls two outs 
for G who's been getting more than a share of ground ball outs tonight. Well, you just explained it though. That's the first time I've, I've seen that. That's what he does wrong is that on the pitch away he wraps that right elbow towards the first base coach. He brings it he in. He pulls it in instead of extends instead it out. Of getting full extension. My, my father always taught us that to extend your arms out when you're swinging. When a pitch out over the plate don't bring your arms in go and sweep almost sweep with your arms but it's not but it's not a sweep. Because you got to use your hands and wrists. So a pitch away where you can extend your hands, you want to go out all the way, full extension. You don't want to go, he does this. And that's what he does. Yeah. So that's now, the way he taught. He's had success. Now, was he doing that even yes, when he first came up? He was. He had an he had a bit of of of, of a st it's a stiff swing and these kids today, the young men, I should say, are so strong with the workouts they can they can get by with their upper body strength. We've talked about how how there's everybody's upper body hitters today. Uh, Freddie Freeman right now, but the plate is not. He uses his, his legs uh, as well as his upper body as one. The best thing I can say about Freddie Freeman. He looks like a, a player from 30 years ago. That's the kind of swings they had. Is he's a, a steps. Um, he's got a stride. Um, he uses his whole body. There's ball four. Second walk given up by G. A two out walk. And the one thing that Hayward used to do when he first came up and used to do was three years ago now. It's not that long ago, but when he was in spring training that year and he was the talk of baseball. He had the ability to hit the home runs to left field, down the line to left field, and uh, he's become more of a pull hitter also. Yep. Do you think that comes from playing on a team that is so home run dominant that you get wrapped up in that a little bit? I think it's part of the game today. The guys like to hit home runs today, Ron. You know. Yeah. We were talking earlier, Ronnie. You asked who was it? You asked the question of Ron Gary, uh, Gary or was it Greg Picker, or our producer? Would you rather face a home run hitting lineup or a lineup full of pesky hitters? And you, you said, if I knew what the answer was, yeah. you said, I'll take the home run hitting team. McCann walked his first time up, and he tops one foul. Big shift on McCann here, who was another guy when he came up, used the whole field, and now has become a dead pull hitter. And you can see the extreme shift by the Mets. You would never have seen this uh, four, four, five, six years ago. G ahead 0 and 2. And this is high with a fastball. It's really how the question's answered. If you asked 30 years ago, would you rather hit 290 and hit 15 home runs, or would you today rather hit 30 home runs and hit 220? Or pick the you know 25, 30 home runs every single time. Maybe not 30 home runs, 20 home runs. The real question is this: I remember in a conversation with Bob Gibson and then. And Bob, in a tight game, someone asked him, "Who would you?" It was about Pete Rose. He goes, "I never minded facing Pete Rose in a one-run game because he couldn't hit a home run. I didn't have to worry about him beating me." Which makes makes sense, yeah. huh? Now the two-two to McCann. Got him with a high fastball. First strikeout of the night for Dylan G. So G has held the Braves without a hit through four. No score as we go to the bottom of the fourth.
score. It is right now time for the Verizon Fios upgrade with Ron Darling. Well, the, the upgrade we're going to talk about is Dylan G, and he started the season so poorly. Why? I think he was a little tentative after missing a good part of last season without artery surgery, came back. Spring training, he didn't look right, didn't look like in the beginning of the year, and then at the start against the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Started pitching in, started going back to that changeup, and it just changed his entire year. He's been aggressive, and now he's uh, one of those steady eddies that you count on every fifth day. Did you notice that when we came on camera, Keith looked like he had his hand caught in the cookie jar? <laughs> I didn't, because I wouldn't have been able to do my upgrade. They uh, they have haagen vanilla ice cream folks up here with the chocolate coating, and in between innings, I just wolfed it down. I wasn't quite finished. But I did see you laughing out of the corner of my <laughs> eye, Gary, and I was wondering if it was what I was saying. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I'm not sure I even heard what you said. <laughs> I'm sure it was great. I don't know. It was great. <laughs> Marlon Bird leading off the bottom of the fourth. Marlon struck out his first time up. One of five strikeouts over the first three innings for Julio Tehran, who's had to work significantly harder than Dylan G over his tenure. G's allowed only two base runners. Tehran's had to negotiate around two hits, a walk, and a hit by pitch. And Bird with a half swing. He went around and it's 0 2. Ike Davis on deck. John Buck behind him. Line to right. On comes Upton. Can't get it. And Bird is on the move. Around second. Track down by Hayward. And Bird arrives safely at third base with a triple. Justin Upton has been playing left field most of the time this year. Playing right field. Trying to make the shoestring catch. And he came up empty. Well, Gary, you mentioned it early. How the defense in the outfield. With Hayward in center. Now, Hupton has played right field for the Diamondbacks before coming to the Braves, but hustling out of the box, and he can still fly at 35 too, as well as have a quick bat. There's a couple things about that play. One, that was more off the end of the bat, so it was sinking on Upton. But second, with no outs as a right fielder, you've got to be sure of that. Or if you play it, you got to play in the middle of your body so it bounces off you and stays in front. So the Mets in a scoreless game have a runner at third and nobody out. The infield comes in for Ike Davis, who had a fly ball double down the left field line his first time up. And Ike rips one through the hole, a base hit, and the Mets grab the lead. Bird comes in to score. Ike Davis with the RBI single, 1 0 New York. Well, Ike driving in a run here. First ball, fastball, a little shock at, at that pitch selection. He hasn't seen a lot of those in the last not. two years. You know, he had a 2 0 count in his first at bat. Tehran threw a fastball right down the middle. He took it. Wondering if McCann just thought they could sneak one by him. First pitch. Davis now two for two, and now John Buck. By the way, in relation to Ronnie's upgrade, I want you to know that Verizon Files making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet. That's Powerful. Here's Buck up and away for ball one. So the Mets who only got one run against Tehran in six and two thirds the first time they faced him this year. Now have a run home here in the fourth and the early lead. Davis at first and nobody out. And Buck grounds one over the bag at third. Johnson gets the out at second. Uglas turn in time for the 5-4-3 double play. Two out and nobody on. Well, not hit very hard, not a fast runner. Ike just goes right to the bag, and Ugla just says, Africadabra gets out of the way, turns a nice pair. Well, that's a that's a play that Ike uh, Got to get a piece of Ugla there. You know, it's almost like he slid to the bag and then realized at the last moment, you know what, I should have done something, and he kind of reached out with his right hand when it was far too late. Well, you got to take your some second basemen that are great deekers yeah. that, that know how to either go 
wait to the last minute or you got to take a sometimes on a play like that you do you, you take a 50 50 chance I think he's going to go out like Ugla did right there so you slide out but the real good second basemen can see out of the corner of their eye and make the adjustment appropriately either way it's a nice turn I thought Neuenheis thought he was hit on the foot by that pitch no argument from the Mets dugout apparently so it's simply a ball to New and Ice, who struck out his first time up. And the change up, up and away. 2 0. Oh. Atlanta Braves, Dylan G. 1 0 Mets. Deja vu. <laughs> I think Parnell gets the ninth this time. Yes, he does. <laughs> To new and nice. Although, if you'll remember, I don't remember exactly what the number was, but Dylan's pitch count was extremely low going to that night, and he was completely dominant. Yeah, he, he was in charge the entire night, just uh, looping a blast. Because remember, that was the game that began after a nearly four hour rain delay. So they were playing at one o'clock in the morning, and the Braves were giving away a, a, a few at bats along the way. But it, uh, at a very late hour, Freeman wound up with the thunder that turned the game around. Second walk given up by Tehran in the midst of a two out base runner. And Omar Quintanilla, the batter. Quintanilla grounded out to second base his first time up. You remember that um, that game that G pitched was the first of what turned out to be three games started and completed in less than 24 hours. Because the Mets and Grace played a day night doubleheader the next day. Quintanilla batting with a runner at first and two out. And Neuenheis just got the hand back. Boy, he's got a good move. Quick, accurate, short armed it. Freeman with a quick tag. Pretty close. Could have went either yeah, way. It could have gone either way. Yeah. Young got picked off in the first. Murphy almost got picked off in the third, and now an even closer play on Newenheis. Shortens up the lead a little bit. So he said Tehran's a good hitter, good fielder, good move. Goes well for him in the National League. Quintanilla drives one to right field, overcomes Upton, and that retires the side. But the Mets get the first run of the game. Marlon Byrd leading off the inning behind in the count, drives one to right. Justin Upton can't make the play. Byrd with the triple. Davis drives him home, and the Mets take a one nothing lead after four.
On to dealers. Dylan G hasn't allowed a hit over the first four innings. Now he has himself a lead. Mike Davis with the RBI single to put the Mets in front. That young lady was deeply into her snack. Didn't get to see what it was, but it must have been good. Like Keith with his ice cream. <laughs> Evan Gaddis leads off in the fifth inning. Gaddis fly to right on the first pitch he saw from G. 26 year old rookie who made uh, quite a splash early this season. Takes inside for ball one. Of course, Brian McCann was out at the beginning of the year. That gave Gaddis a chance to catch and show off his skills at the plate. He's also proven to be a dynamite pinch hitter. He's already got four pinch hit home runs this year. As strong as anybody in the league. Gintany on the backhand has some time to set and throw out Gaddis one away. Now Ugla who had a comeback or his first time up. Ugla's old team the Miami Marlins are playing in Colorado tonight. After getting shut out for the entire weekend by one of the worst pitching staffs in the National League, the what, Milwaukee Brewers. Where are they at? 35 innings without scoring? 37. Third. Wow. Really? Try the nightmare. Off the end of the bat, Young started back, now comes in. And there are two out. In the wake of the uh, Ryan Braun suspension, players everywhere are being asked about it. The uh, the quote from Logan Morris of the Marlins was, "Hey, we all must be clean. We haven't scored in 37 <laughs> innings." He's pretty funny. I know Kevin's done some features on him for our network, and uh, he always has something funny to say. Well, it's the longest scoreless streak for any team since the Astros in '85, went 42 innings without a run. The year before their great year. Wow. Chris Johnson thrown out by Daniel Murphy on a good play his first time up and the uh, Braves as this game is moving along are attacking earlier and earlier in the count against Dylan G. They sure are when you're a team that strikes out a lot too. you go through those phases where you don't want to get the two strikes. You know, they lead the league in strikeouts. Well this is what happened the first time around with G in that game in Atlanta he was getting so many quick outs and moving so quickly through that game. Already had five one pitch outs in this ball game. In the uh, the game he lost on the Freeman home run, he threw 101 pitches in eight and a third innings. It was the first time Dylan had ever pitched in the ninth inning in a major league game. Is it 85 or 84 with that Astro team that Nolan Ryan led the league in ERA and had a losing record? Eight and 16. I think it was 85. Yeah, like low two ERA. Driven to center field, new and high steadies. Side retired. Hard hit ball off the bat of Johnson. The Dylan G now has five hitless innings. Halfway through, one nothing New York.
Tomorrow, game two of this series between the Mets and Braves. Tuesday night baseball presented by City. Carlos Torres makes his second start for the Mets against Chris Medlin. Our coverage begins tomorrow at 6 o'clock right here on SNY. There are the City probables for the remainder of the series. Torres and Medlin tomorrow night. Jeremy Hefner tries to uh, rebound from that ugly Friday start against the Phillies against Tim Hudson Wednesday. Zach Wheeler Thursday afternoon against the lefty Alex Wood. Dylan G leads off the home fifth inning. G struck out his first time up. Dylan has thrown just 56 pitches to get through five hitless innings. This is a realm that G has visited before. In fact, his first major league start in 2010 in Washington, he went five hitless innings. Remember that? Willie Harris broke it up with a home run. The longest he's ever gone without allowing a hit was five and two thirds. That was also against Washington in May of 2011. One and one to G. Eric Young to follow, and then Daniel Murphy against Julio Tehran. And G drives one to center. Hayward easing back. One away. So one out and nobody on. Eric Young coming up. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhart. Kevin. Oh, well, you guys were talking about Roger McDowell and what a tremendous pitching coach he has become. And it, sometimes it's almost unheralded. You never hear from him. He doesn't love doing the on camera stuff. And in league circles, his name doesn't get brought up enough. But I talked to a lot of the Braves today about McDowell. And obviously, Keith and Ronnie, you know plenty about him. But what makes him so good? Why do the players like him so much? And his manager, Freddie Gonzalez. And Tim Hudson, the veteran, said, you know, I'll tell you, there's a lot of things. You know, obviously, the time Roger got here, I was kind of set in my ways. But he does a great job helping me stay on point. He's fantastic with the younger guys. He really helps the younger guys kind of find who they are and develop what they really are and how they can be successful. He said, one thing is, though, I, I did think I'd see a little bit more pranks from him, but he takes our success and our failures very, very seriously. He said he still does have a little bit of it in him, though. Every once in a while, I'll come into my locker, and there'll be a little something there that maybe, say, I could use as a prank, and Roger later in the day will nudge me. Hey, did you see the thing in your locker? And, you know, Tim will go and use the type of thing. I talked to Chris Medlin. Medlin said, I love the guy. You know, he is the right combo of knowing when to be vocal and when not as the bouncer by Young and the throw mm. just in time. Good scoop. Freddie Freeman, two down. Uh, but Medlin said he, he knows how to do it. Like, for instance, in the bullpen sometimes when, I, you know, I'm messing up, he sees it, but he wants me to figure it out on my own. That's the thing. Medlin went on to say, guys, said, you know, I watched plenty of videos of him making the hot foot and how to do it. And um, I guess I always ask him, did you, did your teammates think you would be a coach when this was all said and done? And I guess Keith and Ron, you could probably answer that for him. Well, well you know, the thing about Roger is that he had all those antics, but no one was ever more serious than when he was on the mound. He had that real game face. So, you know, everyone has to find an outlet um, for, you know, to relieve some of the stress, sometimes boredom uh, in between games, and that's what Roger did. But once he came in the game, uh, I mean, Keith and I played, you don't usually call relievers gamer, gamers. He was a gamer. Guys, what Fred Gonzalez told me about McDowell, who was raving about him, and I honestly thrilled we were going to talk about him in this way. He said, you know, he's organized, he's detailed, he's great in game, knowing how pitchers are doing. He said, when he says a pitcher's done, he's done, no matter what the pitch count is. Same token, there's been guys 105 pitches, and he says, no, he can give you one more. He's got a tremendous feel for that in game. Well, the key to coaching is, you know, Roger would be a great pitching coach because uh, he had just a great sinker. Uh, to be able to teach a sinker, but you've got to go beyond that. Not everybody's a sinker ball yeah. pitcher, and you've got to work with that. But there's 12 pitchers, they all are distinct. Well, I thought that graphic we displayed yeah. while Kevin was talking was instructive as Murphy rips one foul. Each of the last five years, the Brave staff ERA has gone down. That's pretty amazing. You know, guys, I, I asked Freddie Gonzalez, why do you think that he doesn't get 
as much credit around the league as maybe others do. And Freddie said, because he doesn't want it. Yeah. And he didn't want it as a player either. He just. <laughs> He, he was a guy that stayed in the in the background. He's giving it to someone right now, though. Mm. Murphy down swing. I'm chuckling because the Braves' prior pitching coach, he loved to get the credit. <laughs> <It's right. laughs> Didn't mean he was any less good. Talking about Leo Mazzoni. One nothing Mets as G takes the mound for the sixth. at and trivia question which pitcher is the Braves franchise leader in strikeouts. I think I. Oh now. It, well we certainly know who pitched the longest for the Braves and right. won the most games. Are we, to, are we talking both Milwaukee and Atlanta it right Braves. Okay. It would be Boston Milwaukee and Atlanta. Julio Tehran leads off in the sixth inning against Dylan G and takes ball one. I know who it's got to be. Could be wrong but. Well, you had. Um, well, one guy won all those games, but he didn't uh, strike out people. He but he won 363 out games, yeah. and he was around a long time. But you also had other guys who had long tenures with the Braves some, in more some. recent days, who might have been more strikeout pitchers. Some with some funny pitches. Right. The guy I got in mind uh, was a 200 strikeout guy. Threw a lot of innings. Pitched mm -hmm. forever. Right. 300 game winner. Looked like Kurt Douglas. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> Here's a strike. Two and two to Tehran. Andrelton Simmons on deck, then Jason Hayward. Very low pitch count for G, who's been getting a lot of quick outs. He's got nine ground ball outs already. And another ground ball. Wright hurries in, plays the short hop, and throws out Tehran one away. Let's check in with the studio. Gary Apple standing by for a game break presented by your local Tri Honda dealer. Nats trying to snap a three game losing streak down 5 1 in that game. Here's Andrelton Simmons, who hit the ball very hard his last time up, lining out to left. There have been a couple of very hard hit line drives to the outfield against G that have been caught. And he hits this ground ball right at Kintony and knocks it down. Still has plenty of time to out. So this match is the deepest that Dylan G has ever gotten into a game without allowing a hit five and two thirds inning. Well, we're getting one more out and it's getting serious. <laughs> two out and nobody on for Jason Hayward who's popped a short and grounded to second. Braves have had two base runners this tonight. Brian McCann walked in the second. Freddie Freeman walked in the fourth. 
Since then, she's retired six in a row. He's now had six one pitch outs. Pitching to contact. What a beautiful thing. That shows that you're aggressive, not afraid. Let the hitters get themselves out. For a rare time tonight, behind on the count, two and zero. Oh. Let's see a two zero change up here from G. Let's see. He can do it. Came upstairs with a fastball, and it's three and zero. Oh. Gosh, do you get this guy a hit sign hitting two twenty seven? It's a one nothing game. It's two out, nobody on. Upton on deck. They were taking mm. three and one. Zach Wheeler at work on the fingernails yet again. That's right. He was working on it during the game. 3 1. And Hayward takes a strike on the inside corner. 3 and 2. Just looked like he was taken all the way. I don't understand. Why did he go to 1 0 game? Through. Why not look middle in and try to tie the ball game up? Looking for a walk? Ball four. He threw him a 3 2 changeup. Third walk given up by G. And the Braves have the tying run at first with two out for Justin Upton. Upton is fouled out to first and grounded to short 0 for 2. Dylan's last start before the All Star break. He pitched very well that Sunday in Pittsburgh. Didn't allow an earned run in six and two thirds innings. Continued this fine run that he's been on. Last nine starts, five and one with a 2.67, turning his season completely around after a difficult start. Now Upton, up and away for ball one. And that's the problem, really, with these Braves is that you can be ahead and Lightning can strike at any time with their ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Upton fouls it back. Freddie Freeman would be next. One one to Justin. And a slider off the plate, two and one. Tampa Bay rolling again. How about that? 17 and two over their last 19 games. Just a game and a half behind Boston starting the night. Hayward at first and two out. Two one to Upton. Low and away. So now G behind on Upton with Freeman to follow. Braves have hit 118 home runs, leading the National League. The Mets, by contrast, have hit 92. Hmm. They're eighth in the league. So a two-out walk to Hayward. Now a three-and-one count to Justin Upton. And he grounds one toward the hole on the backhand kick today on the long throw. Go! Side retire. Super play by Quintanilla against a fast man in Justin Upton. Right on target. Dylan G, six innings deep. No hits for the Braves.
action. It's brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Slow motion, fast motion. Dylan G has been right on his game tonight. 11 ground ball outs in the first six innings, only one strikeout. And so far, nary a hit for the Braves. David Wright leads off in the home sixth and takes a slider for a strike from Julio Tehran. David hit one to the fence in right center that Hayward ran down his last time up. Struck out in the first. He's 0 for 2. That's about just four hits against Tehran. But a bird triple to lead off the fourth under the glove of Justin Upton and the Nike Davis with an RBI single to put the Mets on the board and give G the lead. And so far he hasn't needed much else. So that's some good defense played behind him. Right pops one up into shallow center and Hayward is right there. One out. A couple of hard hit balls against G line drives to the outfield and that terrific play by Quintanilla a moment ago. You can win a trip for 40 Universal's Orlando Resort. Enjoy all the action in front of Universal's two amazing theme parks and stay on site at the electrifying Hard Rock Hotel. Just go to SNY.TV slash Toyota and enter the Toyota Fan Flyaway Sweepstakes for your chance to win. Here's Bird who scored the only run of this game. Hit a sinking line drive to right. Upton came in, tried to make a sliding catch, but it went under him and rolled back to the warning track and Bird was able to scamper to third with his third triple of the year. Up and in. And Tehran gets ahead of him. Tehran struck out Bird on three pitches in the second and was ahead of him 0 and 2 before that triple in the fourth. Davis on deck. Curve ball popped up. Freeman waiting for it to come down. And quickly there are two out. <laughs> Freddie Freeman thought there were three outs. <laughs> and then he pointed to Ugla two outs. Now he's letting all the outfield and everyone know it's two outs. I think if he didn't know, maybe somebody else didn't know. That was funny. Well, here's Davis. Ike has driven in the only run of this game, a hard hit single to right. After he hit a fly ball double that fell in along the left field line in the second. So Davis is two for two. Four for six in his two starts on this homestand. And the curveball misses outside for ball one. Tehran behind 2 and 0. Oh. And Davis takes ball three. And not so much of a distinct shift on Ike. But nevertheless, it is a shift. Swing. It's 2 and 1 to Davis. And he takes a strike. No, I thought it was 3 and 0. Oh. I did too. 2 and 1. I, I think. Not quite sure. I think it's three and one. Okay, scoreboard still says two and two, and Ike's now asking. Yeah, you just saw the scoreboard, and so, it's like he wants to get it straight. Yeah, I think it's three and one. So what's well. the umpire should put his hands up? If something was wrong in the count in the scoreboard, the umpire would put three, three and one up with his fingers. Well, apparently there's a uh, Cooper saying it's two and two. Yes. So we never saw him call a strike on those first three pitches, but apparently there was one. So the scoreboard's on it. So it is two and two. And he pulls one over the bag. Nice play by Freeman. Took a double away from Davis. Side retired. Dylan G goes back to work. One nothing New York.
Hurricane Sandy, and the damage was devastating. SNY and New York Community Bank joined forces to help the new Milford Little League get back on track with the SNY Play Bowl Award. See more of their story and the stories of past recipients at Facebook.com slash SNY. Freddie Freeman leads off the seventh inning against Dylan G. Freeman is grounded to second and drawn a walk 0 for 1. G has walked three, struck out only one, and has not allowed a hit over the first six innings. And the curveball misses badly, and it's 2 and 0. Brian McCann on deck, Evan Gaddis behind him. And Freeman rifles one into center field. And for the second straight time facing the Braves, Freeman breaks Dylan G's heart. And almost broke his nose. Nice. Nice ovation here for Dylan. He's got a duck here, though. Almost had it. It's interesting in baseball how situations call for certain pitches. You're leading one to nothing. You have a no hitter. It's a two and zero oh count, though. You have to go after him. So the Braves had their first hit. They also have the tying run at first with nobody out. And Brian McCann, the batter. McCann has walked and struck out tonight, 0 for one. And the Mets shift over to the right against McCann. And he swings and misses at a fastball. Had a big cut, nothing in one. How would you like to be a pitcher with a ball coming back to your head? We've been there. Comes quick. You know, each of his prior two starts, Dylan had line drives hit right back at him, right at his hip, and he was able to catch the ball each time. Once he turned it into a double play, balls hit just as hard as that. There's a part of you. There's the no hitters against the Braves. Ken Forsh. Last one was Ubaldo Jimenez. Randy Johnson, of course, threw that perfect game against the Braves. The count. John the count, Montefusco, New Jersey boy. Ralph Kiner will be glad to know that if you go back to the Boston Braves, Ewell Blackwell threw a no hitter he against <laughs> the Braves. Ralph always says Ewell Blackwell was the toughest pitcher he ever faced. We're going to see Ralph soon, right? He'll be here Thursday. Nice. Two and one to McCann. And the curve ball sits high. And G starting to fall behind hitters. He walked Hayward in the sixth. Fell behind Upton three and one. Got him on a ground ball. Fell behind Freeman two and zero. Oh, gave up the base hit. Now three and one on McCann. Buck sets up away. And McCann got a piece of that. Three and two. Not exactly where Buck had the target. Yeah, really cut across it there. Got fortunate. You know, it doesn't matter how long Dylan G pitches. I always think around that sixth, seventh inning, you always have to be a little careful for him because when he does start to lose it, it goes quickly. Gaddis on deck. Freeman at first, nobody out. Three and two to McCann. Big shift. He's running, and McCann fouls it off. Well, Freeman is not a speed guy. And on a team that has a lot of strikeouts, McCann may not strike out as much as much as some of them, but he's still vulnerable to the strikeout. So that's a gutsy call by Freddy Gonzalez to send the runner. Well, there was a day McCann would be almost. It's just starting to rain. I knew it was all around here. McCann's a tough strikeout. See if he sends him again. He does. McCann goes down. Buck with the throw. Right with the tag. Safe. Got around it. And Freeman has his first stolen base of the season. Now they scramble to cover third because there was nobody home. Four different players ran toward third base. Nice change up there by Dylan. Good strong throw from Buck. But see where David is? David's about five, six feet in front of that bag. Maybe three feet. Sorry, he missed him. He got by him. Freeman showing some surprising wheels there. So Freeman with his first stolen base of the year. He's in scoring position with one out, and Evan Gaddis the batter. That's only the second strikeout for G. They both have been McCann. 
Gaddis tonight is fly to right and grounded to short. Very strong young man. Powerful swing an awkward swing. But when he connects it goes. And he takes the curveball inside for ball one. And he's a guy who chokes up on the bat. No batting gloves chokes up. We'll see if he does here. He's got big hands. Yeah, mitts, huh? Yep. I don't believe he is. Nope, he's down. Oh, a little bit, Ron. Just just nope. just a tad. Gets down that squat position. Yeah, just used those big hands as a janitor, <laughs> as a ski lift operator. Had a four-year hiatus from baseball after high school. Can't call that a choke up. It's a strong man. Strong but, swing. But he beat him. He beat him with that fastball. David Freeze for the Cardinals took a year off from baseball also. There's his idea as a janitor back in his days away from baseball. I was a janitor in the Cape Cod League. I didn't get an ID. Were you? <laughs> yeah. Hit hard through the hole of base hit. Freeman had to hold up. So he'll go to third and stop there. So Gaddis with a base hit. And the Braves have first and third and one out. Well, Freeman has to freeze here. Because the ball's in front of him. He doesn't want to, he's already in scoring position. There's one out. Little hanging slider. Ripped by Gaddis. So now the tying run at third. The potential go ahead runners at first. Dan Ugla, the number seven hitter up. So you saw Freddy Gonzalez on the phone to his bullpen. No action in the Mets bullpen with G faltering a bit here in the seventh. Ugla with 120 strikeouts on the season. He doesn't get many hits, but if he does, they're usually home runs. Ugla's 0 for 2 tonight, a comebacker and a fly ball to left. And first pitch swinging bounces the slider foul. Well, He's been getting ground balls tonight. He's already got 11 of them. He'd love to get one here and get himself out of the inning with a double play. Ugla hitting 143 on the season with runners in scoring position, and that's over 70 at bats. And now the Mets bullpen gets to work. David Arts, my first man up. 10 for 70 with runners in scoring position. Backhanded by Buck. The ball on a strike. He's another one of those guys, Ronnie, you make a mistake and yeah. he can put a hurt on you. Well, he's certainly done it here. This is the fifth year of City Field, and no visiting player has more home runs in this ballpark than Dan Ugla. And Luis Avila up in the bullpen for the Braves. Ugla's hit nine home runs at City Field. Coming inside. And oh. he gets hit by the pitch, and the bases are loaded. Mentioned that with Tehran earlier in the game. He and Dylan both have that pitch that when they try to go inside the righties, up the ball just takes off and hits Ugla. So the predicament gets deeper for G, working with a one nothing lead. Braves up the bases loaded and one out. And Chris Johnson coming to the plate. And Chris Johnson, who is really another one of those awkward swingers that has success with an unorthodox swing. He's had a pretty good year in the clutch. 318 for out of uh, 60 at bats. He's also one of the better contact hitters in the Braves lineup. And he's also a double play guy. He doesn't run well. You know, the Mets sent down Greg Burke today to make room for Justin Turner. And those are the kind of guys you'd love to see in this situation to get you a ground ball. But it looks like Archman's not ready, and it's going to be Dylan G here with the bases loaded. Well, you got to play, I think, the corners back. You cannot play the corners in. Oh, you pronounce that, Gary. That's Joey Terdoslovich. That's what I thought. <laughs> Joey Terdoslovich. You got to say it slowly. <laughs> so I'm during spring training this year, and it was a tongue twister every time. All right, and Mets are playing back. They can't play the corners in here. Base hit, they go, they fall behind. Johnson hit it very hard his last time up, lining out to center field. And he fouls off the first offering and on his hands, nothing in one. First time up, Johnson hit a bouncer that Murphy had to move to his right on, and he threw him out. 
Freeman Gaddis and Ugla the base runners. No speed to speak of in any of those spots. Nor at the plate in Johnson. The Braves only had three base runners in the first six innings against G and nary a hit. They've had two hits and a hit by pitch in this inning to fill them up. Johnson takes high a ball and a strike. You know what you're going to do if the ball's hit to you. If you're Dylan G, going to go home yep. and then the first. If David Wright, slow hopper, got to come in, you can make the play at the plate. Double play up the middle. Ike trying to turn two also. Now the 1 1. And Johnson holds the swing. He stopped it in time, says Paul Schreiber. That's a big. He didn't swing, and that's a critical pitch right there. Because now, instead of one and two, it's two and one. I'm stating the obvious here. And he did not swing. He held up three straight fastballs. Rain getting in just a little bit harder. Dylan about to throw his 20th pitch of the inning. Two and one to Chris Johnson. Ground ball to third. Wright is going to come home with it. Gets the force there, and that's all. Freeman forced at the plate for the second out. Good decision by David Wright. Yes, sir. Come get it. A little bit slow coming in on that. I think David had tagging third in mind at first, and then said, uh, -uh I can't do it. I'm too far away. I got to go home. No way he can go to second with it. He might not be able to turn two, so he gets the lead runner, leaving them loaded with two out for Joey Terdoslovich, a switch hitter, so he'll bat left handed against G. Terdoslovich has had 24 at bats with the Braves. One for six as a pinch hitter. Well, I'd like this if I was a pitcher. Confidence from your manager to get out of the jam you created. Gaddis is now the tying run at third. Ugly at second. Johnson at first. Terdoslovich, the pinch hitter. Swings and misses at the changeup. Nothing at one. Nice, nice pinch hitter. Cold off the bench. Lead him off with a nice changeup. Josh Edgen joining Art today in the bullpen. And Terdoslovich swings over another changeup, and it's 0 and 2. Can't change a thing, can you, Keith? You can waste one on his inside if you want, or just go back to the well. You got it, Ron. You know better than me. I'm afraid of that pitch up and in that might nick the hitter. Bounce one more. He struck him out. Dylan G fans the pitch hitter to Dostlovich, and the Braves are kept off the board. Strong pitching with the bases loaded by Dylan G. Gets the force at the plate and the three pitch strike out of the pinch hitter to Doslovich to get himself out of trouble. Seventh inning stretch, 1 0 New York.
Braves franchise leader in strikeouts was a Warren Spawn, Phil Necro, John Smoltz. Smoltz. Oh, Smoltz. So he topped Necro. Didn't Necro get 3,000? Oh, my mistake. Well, uh, uh, Necro did, but, you know, he pitched for the Yankees. Right. right? How many so. did he actually have for the, for the yeah, Braves? Yeah, right, right, right. Luis Avilan comes out of the bullpen. He's really picked up the slack for the two injured lefties. Yeah, he has. He has just been uh, outstanding since the middle of April. 32 of his 36 appearances have been scoreless. John Buck leads off in the home seventh inning. And pokes one foul. Now, G is due up fourth in the inning after that strong work. He's at 96 pitches. You think he's done, or does he get another inning? He, he's finished. I would, I would guess that he's finished. A lot of heavy lifting, a lot of pitching under duress. That inning, you know, sometimes you spend all your bullets in an inning like that just to get out of it. Great pitching, though. Buck gets jammed and pops it up. Chris Johnson into foul ground. One away. By the way, Phil Necro, 99 strikeouts behind Smoltz. Mm, that's what he I had thought. 2,912 yeah. as a Brave. I thought that. Now Juan Lagares will be the pinch hitter. With a left-hander in the game, he'll bat for Newenheis, who went 0 for 1 and 1. Lagares today named National League Player of the Week for the half week. Because oh, the that's... week only went Friday through Sunday. That's why Hawkins getting ready to pitch the eighth inning for the Mets. So Lagares bats for Newenheis. He went 7 for 10 in the series against Philadelphia, including a three-run homer yesterday. Well, young Juan gets himself a hanger and he launches it. He, but he primarily goes the other way. He, that's what I like about him. And there's the umpires with the call. But when he gets the barrel out and squares it up, he's got some pop. Took a big cut of that fastball and it's 0 2. One of the young players that is well liked by his teammates. He's a hard worker. Um, when you're a veteran on a team and you have a, a young player come up, there's Quintanilla on deck. Doesn't say too much. Works hard. Um, usually, your teammates will will like you, like you a lot. Lagares well, talked extensively after the game last night about some of the adjustments he's made, along with Dave Hudgens, trying to take some of the movement out of his pre-swing preparation. Much like they've tried to do with Ike Davis, although there's not as much movement to eliminate for Lagares. But you know he's a kid who has not gotten to play much and has used his downtime effectively. He said he went home during the All-Star break and did nothing but look at tape of all his at-bats the entire season. I mean, it's just shocking to me that a, a young man, and we've seen this happen with the Mets uh, in the last few seasons. You bring up players who, who don't play a lot, and you know their skills atrophy. Just the opposite for Lagares. I still think, and I definitely could be wrong about this, but I still think facing all these left-handers, having the baseball come coming into him as opposed to away from him like a hard right-handed slider has only helped his development and his ability to raise his average. Rain continues to come down a little steadier, a little heavier by the minute. 2 2 from Avilon and the curveball balloons outside 3 and 2. Avilon has uh, slipped a couple times now pitching here and then lost control of that pitch. Wonder if the rain is affecting him now. Brown's crew at the ready if needed. 3 and 2 to Lagaris with Quintanilla on deck. And Lagaris grounds one to Simmons. Two out. So with two out and nobody on, Omar Quintanilla will be the batter. And Josh Satton has come out on deck. Go back for G if Quintanilla keeps the inning going. Well, you can't ask for more than what Dylan G gave the Mets tonight. Held the Braves hitless through the first six. And then after giving up a couple of hits and hitting a batter in the seventh, worked out of a big time jam. To keep the Mets in front. So after 
Matt Harvey went seven scoreless yesterday. G backs him up today with seven more. A little different style. That's a fine. A lot instead of different of, ways of doing it. Instead of striking out ten, he struck out three, but he struck out the man he really had to. And he got Trudoslovich to get out of the bases loaded jam. One and one to Quintanilla. That curveball had it the funnel. One and two. And he goes down swinging to end the inning. So Avilon comes in and sets the Mets down one, two, three. Now the Mets will be going to their bullpen for the eighth, up one nothing. All right, Gary, Juan Lagares after pinch hitting stays in the game in center field, and LaTroy Hawkins will work the eighth inning for New York. LaTroy has been very good, only four in runs in his last 17 innings pitched out of the bullpen. He's had some time off, though. His arm has not responded a couple of times in the last two weeks. Worked on Saturday against the Phillies, worked a scoreless eighth, but had a couple of balls hit very hard against him, including a double off the bat of Delman Young. They'll face the top of the batting order. Andrelton Simmons, Jason Hayward, and Justin Upton for the Braves in the eighth. Atlanta no runs, two hits. The Mets one run and four hits. Both starters, Tehran and G, now out of the game. Simmons is 0 for 3, and he takes a letter high strike. Simmons is grounded out twice and lined to left. The Nats are making a move in their game against the Pirates. They were down 5 0. It's now 5 3 in the seventh. Scott Rice up in the Mets bullpen with an eye toward Freddie Freeman. 0 oh 2 now to Simmons. So G with seven scoreless innings tonight, allowed two hits, walked three, struck out three, hit a batter, lowered his ERA to 4.07. And when you consider where Dylan was the first half of the year, that is terrific. And the other way to look at it for Dylan. Simmons just got a piece of that slider. 
Jordan Wald and the hard thrower up in the Braves bullpen. The other way to look at it for Dylan is you know he's only had one full season in the major leagues. His last year was cut short. Yeah. 2011. He had a great first half and really faded in the second half. ZRA after his last 13 starts in 2011 was 5.25. Despite winning 13 games that year. Right. And it was of utmost importance to Dylan to not fade in the second half this year and this being his first start after the All-Star break. It's a great way yeah, to begin. You're right. Quick pitch by Hawkins just off the outside corner one and two. He got Simmons though he wasn't ready. He's shaking his head. <laughs> He's been doing that to people for 18 years. Toward the middle off the mound and Murphy can't smother it and Simmons is aboard. Well, took a little bit of a turn off the back of the mound and Simmons has the Braves third hit of the game. Just out of the reach of Daniel. Oh well. It was quite an at bat for Simmons. He was behind 0 and 2 and barely fouled off a couple of tough sliders on the outside. Got a tough call on the, on the 1 2 pitch. Mm -hmm. So the Braves have the tying run aboard. Hayward the batter. 0 for 2 and a walk. Simmons not a big base dealer. He's got five. And uh, it's also raining, which slows down the track a little bit. And I think the other piece for the Braves is they'd love to keep that hole open for Hayward. Yeah. Looking for the slider down and in that you might see Hawkins throw. I mean, pretty good now. With a big rip of the fastball. Took all those pitches from Gene his last at bat and came up firing here, Keith. I think the book on Hayward is if you can, you can get the fastball by him. Hawkins has been throwing hard recently. Last outing, he got it up to 95 against the Phillies. Good strike there. Paint. Justin Upton waits on deck. Well, he got a hit on Simmons 0 and 2 and couldn't put him away. Now he's 0 and 2 on Hayward. Little tapper. Hawkins gets the out of second. Relay by Kintony and not nearly in time. Ball just hung in the air too long for Hawkins to be able to get a double play, but they erased Simmons 1 6 for the first down. But still, the wherewithal here to know he still has the force out, get the lead runner, keep that runner out of scoring position. You've still got the double play in order. You know, you're a veteran. Kinsinia shouldn't have thrown that ball, but the veteran Hawkins took his time, threw a strike, get the, we'll get the one out. So, one out and one on for Justin Upton. 0 for 3, last time up. And G with two out in the sixth that is no hit bit intact. He hit one in the hole at short and Quintanilla made a very nice play and threw him out. Upton 0 for 6 in his career against Latroy Hawkins. And he bounces this one slowly. Wright gets the lead runner and that's the second out. Again, ball does not hit hard enough to turn two but they erase Hayward. Five to four for the second out. Well, this is a struggling Braves lineup. It's the one guy who's not, though. You know, Freddie Freeman, huge thorn in the Mets' side all year, and especially in Dylan G's, beat him with a home run in the ninth inning the last time he faced the Braves, broke up his no hit bid leading off the seventh tonight. He's the best pure hitter. Uh, in this Braves lineup. I'm going to keep him in the ballpark.
Nothing in one. Thought perhaps we'd see Edge in against Freeman. He was up in the bullpen, or Rice, who was up in the bullpen this inning. But Terry Collins opting to stay with Hawkins against the good left hand hitter. Mm -hmm. And again, Hawkins gets ahead 0 2. Good paint. You want to take me out deep on a home run when here's a fastball knee high outside the corner. Try to pull this one out of the ballpark. Oh, and two to Freddie Freeman. An emergency hack on the fastball away. Freeman hitting over 300 against lefty, so that might have played into the decision. I think if Freeman gets on, there's no question Rice would come in to face McCann. McCann more susceptible to the left handed pitcher. Upton at first and two down. And Freeman pokes another one foul. And a slight uppercut does Freeman. I always think he's vulnerable to the pitch up in the strike zone. Yep. He's got a, he's a low ball hitter, no question. He's got the power to go to left center field, too. You Again, the 0-2. He struck him out. The Troy Hawkins fans, Freddie Freeman, and keeps the Mets in front, one nothing. Baseball on SNY is brought to you by State Farm. Tonight's State Farm agent of the day is John Garfinkel of Brooklyn. Contact John's office at johngarfinkel.com. By Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. And by Five Hour Energy Shops. And Murph and Casey Stengel. Isn't that great? It's Al Jackson on the That's right. That's Al, now. yes. Mr. Met was a lot younger than look. Happy birthday, Casey. <laughs> Here's Rowdy Mets box score. 
Mike Davis has driven in the only run of this game after a triple for Moreland Bird. There have only been seven hits in this game three for the Braves, four for the Mets. And the Mets with a 1 nothing lead looking for insurance as we go to the bottom of the eighth against the hard throwing right hander Jordan Walden. Mr. Met might be a little younger, but he looks like he's had some cosmetic surgery since then. Walden has <laughs> been outstanding. His last, last 19 appearances, 18 innings, only has given up a run and 20 strikeouts. Josh Satin will be the pinch hitter. Batting for Latroy Hawkins, who gave up a leadoff hit and then did a terrific job getting out of that top of the eighth. Satin started the last two days, went one for seven in the series against the Phillies, and takes the slider off the plate from Walden. He has that unusual triple jump off the mound. Bobby Parnell gets ready for the save opportunity in the ninth. The darndest thing, I honestly just never have seen it. Jump. Line left field, base hit for Satin. So the Mets have an insurance run aboard. Satin comes through as a pitch hitter. Here's the motion. Lifts that leg and then he just kind of hops. <laughs> and that foot ends up, back foot ends up about, by the time he delivers the baseball, about three feet in front of the rubber. So basically he's pitching for 57 feet. Exactly. And there's a close up. Boom. And jump. It's amazing. He's further down the hill with that lead leg than anybody I've ever seen. He never has to worry about uh, the other pitchers in the mound before him. And Let's see if the Mets oh, try and bunt him over now. You've got a bunt here, I think. You just get the, the big insurance run. Your two and three hitters coming up. Murph and Wright, your line drive hitters. Well, the well, Wade Johnson was selling out to the bunt on that first charge. I'd be tempted to slam one down his throat. Just the uh, it over here to Freeman to get a free base. Yep. But Satin. Walden doesn't feel this position that well either, the pitcher. He's swinging. Nothing in one to Young, who's walked, struck out, and grounded out tonight, 0 for 2. I like the bunt here. I don't care what Chris Johnson's doing. Bunt it down to first base. Make the pitcher handle it. He's not going to make the play. Well, it's backed up Chris Johnson at third now. He's a little bit, a uh, little leery. Young has cooled down on this homestand, just one for 13. Walden acquired from the Angels in the deal that sent Tommy Hansen to Anaheim. And this time Young is bunting right back to the pitcher. Walden's got time and gets the force play on set. 1 6 on the force play as Young bunted it hard and straight back to the pitcher. That was a gutsy play by Walden here. He had to no time to second guess here. He had to field it and wheel and throw. Now he's probably getting direction from McCann, the catcher. Well, bunted too hard, but my apologies to Walden. I never thought he'd be able to make this play. And Satin doesn't have a lot of speed. He just got him. Well, for the Mets, what has to happen next is for Young to steal second. With Murphy at the plate and one out. And Murph takes a fastball for a strike. This is where I just feel that Murph can really, in the number two position, to become a good hit and run hitter, and he can do it. This is the situation here. At this point in the game, in this tight a game, a hit and run right here sets it up big time for your big bats, your three and four bats. Pitch out. Brave suspected that something was on, but Young was not going. David right on deck. Another pitch out. When's wow. the last time you saw that? So now you pitch out twice and you got a hit and run count. Freddie Garcia, one of those ex catchers uh, in his minor league days. I honestly don't remember the last time I saw a team pitch out twice in a row. Not going to do it three times, so you might as well put a play on. There goes Young, and Murphy swings and misses, and they let Young go. No throw. 
No throw. I don't understand. What are you afraid of? That was a straight steal. Young didn't look back, but Murph was swinging. Yeah. 19th stolen base for Young, so now he's in scoring position with one out. A two and two count to Murphy. And Murph tries to hold on the off speed pitch, and he did. Three and two. Well, he throwing that for a strike. Murph was in big trouble. His family was flying out. He was out in front of that. Defenses continue to give Murph that hole between short and third. And he lays off ball four. And the Mets have two men on for right. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. So a single, a stolen base, a walk, and now a chance for David Wright to do some damage. David is 0 for 3 tonight, struck out and twice fly to center. Young at second, Murphy at first with one out. Let's see if David at first ball, fastball hits. There goes Young. No throw, and Young steals third. Twentieth stolen base for Young as he steals second and now third. Well, you have to say Atlanta has fallen asleep at the wheel here with Young on the bases. What would they do with the 80 early? There's 80 Cardinals. Hunt. Jeez. So now fly ball could bring in an insurance run. Oh, right swings at the slider and misses 0-2. It's a change up. Yes, it was. Nasty. S slider first pitch and a sinking chain. Braves are shortening up their infield now. A little more shallow than double play depth. Interesting. McCann was looking at Murphy out of the corner of his eye and then probably came out to. Talk to the pitcher Walden and say, make sure you keep an eye on Murphy at first base with his 11 steals. Or maybe he thought Murph was trying to peek in. Ron and yeah. Relay a sign? I don't know. Maybe we're going to go with three signs. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Very good, Keith. 0 oh 2 to right. And David takes a fastball strike three call. Can't look. Now Walton threw in the kitchen sink, and that's the second out. You've got to go into emergency and be a, just go up the middle. It's a big run out there. You've got to put the ball in play. So I'll tell you left. what. I'm sorry, Gary. That was pretty outstanding pitching yeah. by Walden. So it's left to Marlon Bird, who has scored the only run of this game. He tripled to right under the sliding Justin Upton in the fourth inning and came home on Ike Davis's hit. Now look to extend the Mets lead in the bottom of the eighth. Mets have done a lot of work to set the table here in the eighth inning. Now they need a big two out hit. And Bird grounds one foul. Nice tuffle shuffle. <laughs> Looking ahead to the ninth inning, Bobby Parnell will have Brian McCann, Evan Gaddis, and Dan Ugla, three guys who are all capable of hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Bobby had not given up a home run in almost a year until his last outing. When he was taken deep by Chase Utley. Bird hits it toward the gap in right center, cutting across his Upton, though, and he makes the catch to end the inning. So the Mets strand a pair, and Parnell will have only the one run lead to work with as we go to the ninth at City Field.
Bobby Parnell on to try and save it for New York. Now you see Bobby's numbers 18 to 21 saves. He's been outstanding this year. Only 10 walks in those 44 innings. That's a looking for back to back shutout victories. Yesterday it was Matt Harvey and Scott Atchison combining on a four hitter against the Phillies. Today, G and Hawkins have allowed just three hits over eight innings against the Braves. Ryan McCann will lead off the ninth inning. McCann has walked and struck out twice today, 0 for 2. McCann has good numbers against Parnell, 3 for 7 with a home run. These are the games you got to win. You have Carlos Torres going tomorrow. It's probably more of a five inning pitcher after coming out of the bullpen. You don't know who's going to pitch on Friday in that doubleheader in Washington, or at least one of those games. There's a possibility for the doubleheader that the Mets might push Zach Wheeler back into one of those games and bring up somebody to pitch Thursday. That's a decision that's not yet been made. Borderline pitch that Parnell didn't get. Now behind 2 0 on McCann. And he fouls back the fastball. Bobby throwing just in the 93 range. And we've seen this before with Parnell early in his outings. Little sinking action, though, just kept that off the barrel of the bat. The Mets have only one one nothing win this year. Toward the hole, a base hit for McCann to start the night. Now with the Mets overshifted, he hit it right through the vacated shortstop hole. And McCann is aboard. And you'd have to think he'll be coming out for a pinch runner. And you are correct. And the defense here, are they playing percentages? Well, he went good hitters that can go that way, and that man can naturally. Costanza is going to be the pinch runner, not uh, George. No, Jose. <laughs> Dad, you remember, was the guy who took out Murphy a couple of years ago at second base. Well, the slide that ruined Murphy's season. So now here's Gaddis, who's one for three, singled his last time up in the seventh. Stands are running for McCann. And Gaddis releases one foul. He was just a tad tardy. Looks like he was going that way the whole time. Fastball away. You got to see he's very level on that pitch belt and up. You got to be careful. I think you got to keep the ball downstairs. Remember, this is a guy that'll fish for bad breaking balls, too. He's a wild man up at the plate. First time Parnell has faced Gaddis in a regular season game. And he fouls off another one. Going up, going two. Getting the ball by him. Didn't last time we saw Gaddis, you weren't getting that fastball by him. Dan Ugla on deck. The only run of this game came in the fourth inning, driven in by Ike Davis. Seven terrific innings for Dylan G. Latroy Hawkins worked through the eighth after a leadoff hit, and now Parnell trying to do the same in the ninth. 0 oh 2 to Evan Gaddis. Breaking ball, looped, shallow right, tough play. On comes Bird, it'll drop. Bird was playing deep against the power of Gaddis, and Gaddis dropped one in in front of him, and the Braves have the first two men on in the ninth. Well, I don't second guess the pitch call, but the curveball, we had an 0-2 count, and you could throw it in the dirt and see if he's fishing, and very unfortunate right there, the old bloop. You're right. The execution of the pitch, it's the right pitch. The execution needed to be out of the strike zone. So now Parnell has some heavy lifting to do. Dan Ugla is the batter. I don't think anybody in the ballpark's thinking he's going to bunt. No, in fact, you could send your pitching coach, or even the manager could run out there and say, listen, uh, 
Dan Ugla is not going to bunt. He's going to be free rolling up there. Be prepared to make a quality pitch first pitch. Ugla's got very good numbers against Parnell. Five for 14 with a home run. Tonight Ugla 0 for 2. He's also been hit by a pitch. And Stanza with excellent speed at second. He's the tying run. Gaddis, who is slow, is at first. Nets are going to shift their infield around to the left. And it's taken outside. Ball one. Well, defense on the end. Right was playing on the cut of the grass the first pitch. Now 1 0. He's backing off. I think Ike's in nowhere's land. No man's land. Move back. That's it. Douglas swings through the high fastball. One and one. Could be two and oh. You know, Ugla has a decent swing. Now, this man, I don't, I don't understand why he's an interstate hitter. I just don't get it, Ronnie. And he's a guest hitter, Keith. That's why in some years he's guessing better than others. Miss Johnson on deck. One one to Ugla. Off the outside corner, two and one. The, the first save I've seen Bobby not rattled is the wrong word. Just a little more energetic on that mound. Knows how important this game is for Dylan G and the Mets. Now it's two and one. And Ugly takes on the outside corner. Good paint job by Parnell, two and two. See, I just don't. In situations like this, they're not going to pitch the other inside. He's, he's just stubborn. He wants something to pull. Douglas 120 strikeouts lead the National League. Down to third. Wright will take it to the bag and gets the force on Constanza for the first down. A lot of good choices by David tonight. Very nice here. You're not going to turn two. And the key is also you erase the speedy Constanza. Now you've got two slow guys on the bases with Gaddis at second and Ugly at first. No guarantee Gaddis is going to score on a base hit to the outfield. Ooh, Braves just can't get a key hit tonight. Chris Johnson is 0 for 3. Remember, he came up with the bases loaded in the seventh inning. And hit the ground ball to third. David got the force at the plate for the second out of that inning. Now he bats with two on and one out of the ninth. And it goes to oh, the backstop, oh, no. and the runners will move up. He had to cross him up. That had to be a cross up. You don't miss that ball, fastball down the middle, and don't even get leather on it. Waiting for the curve, gets the express. Maybe not. Oh, no. I think he put some zip on it. Oh. It's a pass ball charge to Buck. And it moves the tying run to third and the potential go ahead run to second. And now Parnell in a spot where he really, really needs a strikeout. Mets are going to bring the left side of the infield in. I mean, come on, you got to push that to yeah. get, get Kit and Nia back. You lose a ball game. They are willing to concede the tying run on a ground ball. And that's Terry saying, ball hit hard and get the guy at home. And we got a slow guy at third and Gaddis. 1 0 to Johnson. And he takes a letter high strike. Oh, big, big call there from Parnell and the Mets. Johnson hot. Thought it was up. The ball's upstairs. In today's game, yes. Yep. Chris Johnson at the plate. Reed Johnson has come out on deck to pitch hit. Here's the 1 1 from Parnell. Grounded to short. The tying run will score. Gintania throws out Johnson. But Gaddis comes home and the game is tied at one. Wow. Oh, my word. So that passed ball proves critical. And the Braves sneak the tying run home. A gift. Ball not hit hard enough playing back. He can't throw. Uh, he couldn't throw me out. Even now. 
Garrett, like, Gary, I couldn't throw you out. <laughs> oh, that, that's really bad. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> now Reed Johnson will be the pinch hitter with the go ahead run at third and two out. The veteran Johnson hitting 282, and he tries to bunt. Trying for the two out bunt hit to get the lead run home. How about that? It's not a bad play. He's got good speed. The problem was his ugla didn't really get a good break from third. He wasn't really expecting that. So it's a blown save for Bobby Parnell. Now trying to give the Mets a tie to take to the bottom of the ninth. And Davis, Buck, and Ligaris do up. One and one to Reed Johnson. Anderson Simmons would be next. McCann let it off with a base hit that defied the shift. Gaddis dumped a single in front of Bird in right field. Ugla grounded it into a fielder's choice, but then that critical pass ball. Line drive base hit, and the Braves take the lead. Wow. Reed Johnson drives in Dan Ugla with the go ahead run. The Braves have scored twice in the top of the ninth and lead two to one. And they have set the stage for Craig Kimbrell. Oh my goodness. High fastball giving the Braves credit. That's a go. Man alive. Reed Johnson with the go ahead hit. Well, the last time Dylan G faced the Braves, he took a 1 0 lead into the ninth, and they beat him on Freddie Freeman's home run. This time, Dylan G against the Braves, left after seven scoreless, handed it off to the bullpen, and the Braves have gotten two in the ninth again. Andrelton Simmons, one for four on the night. Get hard, David oh. Wright with a spectacular stop. And he throws out Simmons to end the inning. But the Braves able to rally to take the lead. A critical pass ball and a big hit by Johnson. It's two to one Atlanta. Changes for the Braves as we go to the last of the ninth. Evan Gaddis moves from left field to behind the plate. Reed Johnson, who had the go-ahead hit, stays in the game in left field. And Craig Kimbrell on to try and close it for Atlanta. Well, since his last blown save, he has converted 17 in a row. His last 23 innings pitched, he has struck out 36 batters. 
Well, the Mets bypassed an opportunity to add some insurance in the bottom of the eighth inning. They had runners at first and third and one out and could not score. And then the Braves able to scratch out two in the top of the ninth against Bobby Parnell. Nope. Well, now the Mets will try and fight back against Kimbrell. Both teams had opportunities, Gary. That seventh inning, the Braves had the bases loaded one out and couldn't get a runner across. Mets have gotten to Kimbrell once this year. Remember, David Wright hit a monstrous home run against him in Atlanta. But you don't get to this guy often. 27 of 30 in save opportunities this year. Ike Davis is two for three tonight. Last time up, he hit the ball hard as well, but was retired by Freeman, who's standing right on the line this time. And the pitch taken for a strike. I mean, you can't be any closer to the line than Freddie Freeman. Well, he played closer to the line the last at bat uh, for Davis and snared one that was just fair. Ike is four for seven against Craig Kimbrell. Not too many hitters can say that. And Quickly is behind 0 and 2. 97 through the raindrops. John Buck on deck. John might get a chance to get some redemption after that pass ball led to disaster for the Mets in the top of the ninth. <laughs> Slider strike three call. Well, you know what? I've seen him do that. That's a just. That's going to get a lot, a lot of great hitters. That pitch. You can't take a fastball from this man. He drops that back door hook. Hey, even the catcher can't catch it. That's how fast he is. So one out in the last of the ninth, and now Buck. Well, if you go back and recreate that inning, you take away the pass ball, and you don't know what's going to happen after that. But then the ensuing ground ball might be a double play. Game's over. You know. He had a defensive shift. So a single against the shift would have been an easy six to three. You have a knuckle curve that you would want it to bounce. You couldn't. Gattis took a nice at bat and dumped it into right field. That's ball high to Buck. He's 0 for 2 and been hit by a pitch tonight. John is 1 for 7 in his career against Kimbrell. Last year had one of the best seasons a relief pitcher has ever had. Struck out more than half the batters he faced. It had never been done before. Two and one to Buck. Takes a big rip. Two and two. That goes sports night, the only show that's only New York sports. Ryan Braun suspended for the season. We'll see what's next. And the Jets move forward with their quarterback, Geno Smith. Hashtag SNY Sports Night tonight after the postgame. Let's try to rebound in the bottom of the ninth in what would be a terrible loss. Buck fouls it off, still two and two. Juan Lagaris is the on deck batter. You know, Kimbrell's a top of the food chain closer, and the difference between he and, and Parnell is that when you need a strikeout, you almost seem to always be able to count on Kimbrell to get it. Bobby more of a contact contact type reliever. Again, the 2 2, and the slider, and it's hit by the pitch for the second time tonight. And the Mets have life. Tying run at first. That's a, a raindrops pinch run. Andrew Brown is going to come in to pinch run for Buck. He took the slider that glanced off his shoulder. So Brown will carry the tying run at first base. Pinch running for Buck. And Mets will hope that maybe Juan Lagares can run into one. After hitting a three run homer in yesterday's game against Cliff Lee, now he faces Craig Kimbrell with one out and one out in the last of the night. Up and in, ball one. Well, we're waiting to see uh, Lagaris 
against a tough right hander. <laughs> Here it is. No. That's what it's all about. Quintanilla on deck. It's like a vulture hanging <laughs> on that sign. And Lagaris takes it high. Kimball behind 2 and 0. The, the rain is definitely affecting Kimball. He's, you know, brushing uh, his hand against his jersey. He's trying to get his hand as dry as he can. And the pitches have all been up in the strike zone. And some Braves had a game suspended by rain here at City Field earlier this season. We played straight through in the rain for the last three innings. Gambrel behind on Lagaris, 2 0. Round the tying run at first. There's a strike, 2 and 1. Took a little off that time. Oh, took a little off in 94. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knee high outside corner, Ronnie. Good pitch, 2 0. Up and in, 3 and 1. So Lagaris, a guy who's almost impossible to walk. Kimbrell is not coming close. Does the young man have magic two days in a row? Cliff Lee yesterday facing Kimbrell tonight. Well, he has to figure he's going to get dead right here. Around falling back into the mud. I just don't think you send the runner here. Three and one to Lagaris. He pops it foul. Three and two. Twenty four year old Juan Lagares fresh off being named National League player of the week looking for a magic moment at the bottom of the ninth. Braves are guarding the lines on the infield and playing a deep outfield. Three and two with one out Brown the runner at first. Not going and Lagares fouls off the fastball better swing there. Yes. Still tight him up a bit. That's the one thing right there. You see Laguerre wiping the bill with his hat there. The drops start dripping down over your bill. That is not good. Craig Kimball, not a big man, but he is strong as an ox. He can fire it in there at 98. And he is really struggling with the weather right but now. You know what? He's lifting his pants. He, you can see his numbers from last season. What is the uh, Jeff Kellogg's coming over the well, crew chief. He's going to check him because he lifted his pants up, rubbed his hands against his sock to try to get his hand dry. So he's going to check him to see if he needs anything. Does he need a towel or use the rosin bag? Well, he's not asking for help. You don't want any delays here, right, Ronnie? You're in the heat of the battle. Three and two coming to Lagaris. And he struck him out. Gambrell mm. fans him with a high, hard one. And the Mets are down to their final out. Upstairs, ball four. Tough pitch to lay off. Yep, he's angry. So it is left to Omar Quintanilla to try and keep the Mets alive with the tying run at first and two out. Quintanilla 0 for 3 tonight and right now in a 2 for 25 funk. Here comes Roger McDowell is going to come out with a towel. So he's going to visit. Let Kimbrell try to get his forearm and hand and the umpire is going to check to make sure that no foreign object was on the towel. And 
this is something that you would never really see, but because of the rain and trying to finish up this game, the Empire and crew is allowing it. Oh, if I be that willing to allow them to do that. Well, Quintanilla gathering his thoughts. This will be his first at bat against Craig Kimbrell. See how they play the corner third base in particular. Chris Johnson at third. Quintanilla could possibly try to put a drag bunt down, but you cannot allow a double here. If Quintanilla can keep the game going, Justin Turner, fresh off the disabled list, would pinch it. You see Johnson way in and on the line third, at third base. Let her high strike. Nothing in one. Yeah. It seems like it's raining a little less right now. Kimball will break. Slider misses. The ball to strike. Would you send Brown here? Test Evan Gaddis, who's not had much no. time behind the plate? No. And yet. Pulled foul. And now the Mets are down to their final strike. Brown just does not have enough speed, even though he's a pinch runner. Uh, it's just because he pinch run for John Buck. He doesn't have enough speed. That's the way the Braves have handled the running game tonight. Yeah. Can't you can't run yourself out of this ball game. Just can't. Kidney hits a double to tie ball game. Now it's one and two. And the slider outside. Two and two to Kentonia. Got to hope for a three two count. Or a double. Kimbrell with a 2 2. Kimbrell yeah. able to stay alive, fouling off that slider. Nice job by Kimbrell. Tough pitch. Kimbrell's had to work hard here in the ninth. This will be his 22nd pitch coming up. Two-two. He fouled off the fastball. Quintanilla with another pesky at bat. Every once in a while, it shows you a little pop too. Good swing on that fastball. He's hit a couple of home runs, and certainly Kimbrel provides the power. To be the seventh pitch from Kimbrell to Quintanilla. Tying run at first and two out. And oh. the slider pops out of the middle. Gaddis, there goes Brown. Gaddis won't throw it, and the Mets on the tying run at second. Good base running by Andrew Brown. It'll be a wild pitch charge to Kimbrell. Well, good heads up here, and that ball's got to be caught. We've seen two bumbles here from both catchers. Let's see, he's on his toes. That's excellent. Well, the buck pass ball put the Braves in business in the top of the inning. Now Gaddis unable to catch that high slider. And now a base hit could tie it for the Mets. And the Braves are bringing their outfield in a little bit tighter now. Except for center field. Hey, we're still playing deep. I don't understand that. Yeah, and that would tint me up. Don't be surprised that 2 2 breaking ball was so bad that he might come back with it. New ball. And they're making them work for this one. It's be the 24th pitch. Kendall is really. Every time he goes behind the mound, he kind of collects himself, Ronnie. Yeah, he's muttering to himself. He is. 
He's in between not pitches. Feeling good. He's in between pitches. You got a cold hitter on deck who just came off the DL. Right-handed hitter. He's in between what he wants to do. Antonia has worked the count to three and two with the tying run at second and two out. Now the back. The fastball from Kimbrell and Quintanilla continues to measure him. This is not Kimbrell's best velocity by any means. Correct. We often see him at 97, 98, 99. It's been more 95 for the occasional 96 tonight. Well, I just don't think he's going to get beat with his second best pitch, Ronnie. Yeah, he's, 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 it's wet. He's not comfortable. If you're going to beat him, you're going to beat him with his bread and butter. Ninth pitch of the at bat. And Quintanilla swings and fouls off the slider. And he was a good one, and that's hanging in there. That is hanging in there. That's a good one. Mm. Oh, by him. Somehow, he was able to get some contact. Well, this game began with a 12 pitch at bat. Anderson Simmons against Dylan G. This one now getting to double digits. Kimbrell against Quintanilla with the tying run at second, two out last of the night. Three two. Ball four. And now the tying and potential winning runs are on base. And fresh off the disabled list, Justin Turner will come up to bat for New York. What an at bat by Quintanilla. Turner just activated today. He last played June the 16th. Run on the disabled list with an intercostal injury. And steps right into the fire. He hits a double here. Does he pie himself? Can only hope. <laughs> Luis Ayala gets up in the Braves bullpen. But this is on Kimball. Two out, two on, two to one Atlanta, last of the night. And the slider inside to Turner as Kimball continues to struggle. So you want to be a big league manager. This will give you ulcers. A hit batsman, a wild pitch, and a walk. They have given the Mets a chance in the bottom of the night. Turner hits one in the air, left center field, long run for Hayward. He dives in! He made the catch and the ball game is over! Jason Hayward with a game saving play and the Braves win it 2 to 1. I thought this ball was going to drop. Look at the reaction to Reed Johnson. Oh, what a play. Hayward playing center field for only the fifth time in his major league career. He was shaded toward right center against Turner. Had to come over into left center field and makes a game-saving play. And the Braves win the ball game 2-1. to one. He needed all of his six foot six inches for that play in left center field. What a play. Through the raindrops. Wet track. Now the Mets battle in the bottom of the ninth, but this is still a very disheartening loss. They took a 1-0 lead into the ninth inning, but they let it get away, and Jason Hayward made sure that they couldn't get it back. Game summary brought to you by Extended Stay America. Brilliant effort by Dylan G tonight. Held the Braves hitless for the first six. Gave up only two hits. Latroy Hawkins got out of trouble in the in the eighth inning. Bobby Parnell couldn't do the save of the ninth. And Carroll staggers to his 28th save of the year. Two to one the final. Back with more from Flushing in a moment.